dogs are gaily flying o'er Celtic Park today Because the lads of Celtic have showed the world the way They played the game in Lisbon and here is how they won They didn't play defensive, attack was what they done Oh, the lads are right for Celtic, they know just what to do And Scottish hearts and Irish hearts are mighty proud of you Big world over, the name of Celtic rung And in the heart of Glasgow, our Celtic song was sung God bless you, great eleven, this is your greatest day Next season, Jack from Greenock, we're with you all the way Oh, the flags are right for Celtic, they know just what to do And Scottish hearts and Irish hearts are mighty proud of you So many cups this year Four or five or six You should give one to Rangers They're really in a fix John Lawrence shook your hands Lads as you came off the plane And everyone is proud of you Your football brought your fame Oh the flags are out for Celtic It's now just what to do And Scottish hearts and Irish hearts Are mighty proud of you Oh the flags are out for Celtic Do. And Scottish hearts and Irish hearts are mighty proud of you. <laughs> that was Joe McKenna singing. <laughs> no, it wasn't really. Uh, hello and welcome to Homeboys number 163. I do believe this is your uh, host for this evening, if I can remember how everything works. Because it's been a wee while since I've done this. Um, with no Joe McKenna on the night, Joe's... Uh, only five weeks away for his wife being better, so he's looking half the whole night and doing, I don't know, massaging her feet and shit like that, I don't know, whatever they got up to. Uh, Hoover and Dustin and just being a husband and dad waiting for the new child to come along. So anyway, Joe's out tonight, but without further ado, welcome Mr Jason Higgins, you there Jason? I'm here. And over in Edinburgh, Mr Paul Larkin. Hello. So just the three of us gentlemen, I'm, I'm all out of sorts here, I'm all harassed, I'm sweating and I'm not even put a link up to, to, I don't know, but we'll get through it, right? I'll calm down once I've had this fucking gin. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus, I need to talk. I had a wee bit of an emergency there, boys. Had everything set up. Has it, I've had everything set up for about an hour today, I thought it was on top of everything, right? Had the MacBook set up, had my music put in. I've been signed into Skype for an hour. How's my dinner? I made the dinner. Everything ready. Takes the gin. See, this is a problem when your bottles are up my gantry. And they're anakin. I haven't checked. Fucking about enough for three gins. And I've got about seven or eight hours to go tonight, so. Um, not this show, like, but. So I had to get an emergency. Fucking run up to the shop. In my slippers. I keep walking through the supermarket. I've got a few looks, I can tell you. But, uh, we're here. And we're queer. So that's it. What's happening? Not a lot. Not a lot in the land of the hoops, but uh, we're, I'm looking forward to hearing about Paul and his uh, asterisk years, obviously. Mm-hmm. St Johnson on the Friday night, I don't know, cover that first. Well, we'll cover the football first and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what order you want to go in. We can talk about the, uh, the, the Q&A, some of the points that came up last week that... Uh, was obviously shared when Dyla was saying he was what his players he was targeting and someone trimming the squad and different things like that. Uh, we'll talk about the Astro Skiers and we'll talk about um I'm not sure Paul, we've got to talk about the other thing. Uh, it's up to you. Oh well, it's up to you. <laughs> See you there. You know what I mean? Okay, I am talking about something aye, anyway. Aye, I wasn't sure what the, the protocol was there. Aye, aye, some right. things can but aye. I don't know what they can. Aye. Cool man. So anyway, Friday night, um who did we play again? St Johnson. I'm telling you, man, I'm, f- I'm fucked here. I'm doing what's going on. Who, I can't remember the score, nothing each. No, no, St Johnson. Oh, right, so, um, Jason, I don't think you were there. Paul, were you there? I oh, know, you were at Celtic no. Park. Oh, for fuck's sake, what am I talking Bring back Joe. I should have went through and looked after his wife. Bye. Paul, take it away. Tell me about St Johnson now, Celtic uh, now. You know, 
I think what Ronnie Dialis said after the game was spot on. It was very open game, but no that way with how you want it to be open. Because, I mean, I thought defensively we were all over the place at times. Mm. Hardly surprising given the new guys that come in and change and all that kind of thing. Having said that, of course, we, had, we should have had two or three, maybe even four goals ourselves. And uh, I'm sure like everybody, everybody jumped up when Forrest went through. It was only the day after that I saw the horrendous bobble that it took. Right. Just before it, and it was, you know, I mean, as I know, this has been a bugbear of Ronnie Dialers, and you know, it kind of gets, but the state this Johnson pitch is horrendous. And I saw the boy Callum uh, Davidson, who's uh, the assistant manager there on the Sunday, just laughing off, saying, yeah. "Oh, it's a le- good level for us, you know, that kind of yeah, thing." It them. And it's kind of like fucking hell, man. We're an amateur over here now, you know. But um, you know, for St Johnston had a lot to play for, and we've had a few problems up there, you know. The last few years, so all in all, no, no, it was probably a fair result, and uh, it wasn't the worst result given the team changes. And probably, I would imagine most of the players are thinking about their fucking holidays, quite frankly, you know. <clears throat> Jason, talking about team changes, um, a young Wisher boy aye. making his making his debut on Friday night. Do you, I, you know the family, do you? Aye, aye, aye. I know he's, I know he's, I know he's dark, I don't know if he's dark. I know he's dark, Mick, but uh, no, as well. I know his uncle. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's couple of his two uncles. In fact, I know them better. But aye, I know the family. I don't know the wee, the lad, young Kieran. But uh, aye, absolutely steeped in Celtic. You know the family are Celtic daft. Yeah. You know, so uh, absolutely delighted that the wee man uh, he made his first uh, team debut. And I thought he'd done pretty well. You know, right. it's always a big occasion. But and it's hard as well when you can into a team that's. Kind as Paul says, they've got their passports looked at to go on holiday. Although, I think Dial is still kept the matter. I think Ronnie Dial is not the type of manager that uh, he, he maybe sends some players uh, like he did, send some players away and says, gives them a break. But the ones that's playing, they'll always have to give like 100%. I think he's that type of manager. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I actually pretty, I enjoyed the game. I said, I thought St Johnson played not too bad, but I thought in the second half as it went on, there was only one team going to win, that was us, and we Forrest miss, I couldn't believe it. But then, just after that as well, uh, he's cleaned through and he's put he's put the ball to Griffiths, and Griffiths mm. done great to get a shot away. When to his right hand side, he's got two players there, and it's mm-hmm. like a, and it looks like a tap in. But ugh, at the end of the day, it's a man. End of the season game. The league's won. I was just, I was just glad about the Aberdeen one. They beat Aberdeen up there because I could have seen us losing that as well. Because seeing the years going past under Lenny and whatever, when the league was tied up, the rest of the games, I think we lost more than we won. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think that's just a fact of life. See, when you don't have to win, when it doesn't matter. Because let's face it, it does not matter one jot the score of that game for Celtic. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's got no bearing on anything. Mm-hmm. It's like a pre-season friendly. It doesn't matter. And especially, uh, especially as you say, St Johnston had somebody to play for, like. Aye. 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 Makes all the difference, of I course. Know. Aye, and they were unlucky at the end. They hit the post twice. And <laughs> the, 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 that one, the, the, it was last from Ash, and they hit the post. You said, how did that not go in? But, um, aye. And I thought, I thought actually, Lucas Saluskas was excellent for us in goal. He mm. was. I, I'm a big critic of his, but he was, he was ex- excellent on Friday, I thought. Aye, it was absolutely brilliant, you know, and it's uh, aye, and but it's just one of the nights, and and as you say, we James Forrest went to the ground to swallow him up, but when you see it again, that would have happened to anybody, aye. you know, because it, it, you just couldn't, you couldn't uh, legislate for that, you know, he's done everything right, he, his first touch, see, put the ball under control, and he's straight down the keeper, he's round at the keeper, if that is a decent park, it's in the back of the net. And, Right two ways about it. He's he's been robbed there. Right. It's one of the ones he wants to go and swallow him up. You know? right. <laughs> and everything. I'm, I'm waiting in Celtic for a bet as well. I was calling for everything until I seen it again. Then I was like, oh, your man. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know if you's you's watched it. Well, Paul, I know Paul would know, but Jason, did you keep watching like, like the for the interviews after the game and all that? Aye. And aye. Uh, that the, the two clowns um, kind of slagger him off for it. And Sutton had something had to step in and say, and I was watching it like Sutton was backing up, and I thought, this 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 clown's completely changed his tune about everything here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? See if that had been earlier in the season, he'd have been on his back as well. He's uh, there's just nothing genuine about that guy. I, can't, I don't think anymore. Like no, and I was kind of chuckling at myself, like even for the time he'd done the interview with Ronnie Dial and everything, and I don't know. I think he's maybe realised that he's made a bit of cunty things with the Celtic fans at times. 
Mm. And he's trying to sort of worm his way back in. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, that's that's the way it's that, coming across that, to me. That's the, that's the thing that I think as well. And I think Big Harps is the same. Right. I think he's trying to wheedle his way back into the Celtic support as well. Because right. um, Celtic support can be worth a few quid for them for the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm very sceptical about that. They'll not they'll no get an R penny out of me, I can assure you. But uh, if other people want to contribute to whatever kind of do's they have and things like that in the years to come that's up to them but uh, their ship sailed with me but I'm, I'm not really interested in the end of the two of them I've got to say anyway to be honest with you right. I've seen them in the hoops but as, as pundits and stuff like that I've got no interest in anything the two of them I've got to say anything Right. Well, I think as well is what annoys me about people like them and, and Andy Walker's the same, Craig Burley was the same when he was up here. Nobody would give a toss about anything they said if it was there for the fact they played for Celtic. Yeah. Mm. No, they would ask them for their opinion on Norwich or fucking, you know, Arsenal or whatever. But it's because they played for Celtic, they got a media career. And, and, and then what the day is, turn it on the heat and kick the fucking thing that fed them in the first place. And that's what drives people mad. And I say, I agree with you, Harper. Like, it just, Sutton has just done this 180 where mm-hmm. I just think he's thought, oh, fuck, you know, I'm bankrupt now. Fucking hell, I'm, I'm going to fucking throw piss all this away if I don't start weeding my way back in. And you see them getting interviewed with Ronnie Dyler. I mean, Christ almighty, I mean, he almost had his choosers do it at one point, you know? I know, I know. And that happens, that, and it's like, it's toe curling. You know, because mm. they give the impression that they're, they're this man of honour, that even though they used to play for Celtic, they'll slate Celtic at any right. time. When it's not like that at all. <laughs> they're just thinking, what, what, how can I further my career here? What, what's the best mm. thing for me to do? And then you have to wait. It's a good go. job uh, Joe McKenna wasn't there when he took his trousers down. That's all I'm saying. He'd be away with them. He'd have two pair in the wardrobe. Uh, he'd be off uh. Um But... Funny, you mentioned Zoska, and I, I kind of even forgot that he was playing tomorrow. And then brought it all back to me. I had some fantastic saves, Paul. Um, funny wee story, no funny story, but um, I, I never ever gone. I, I never gone Twitter much anymore, anyway. But someone I had to go on for someone. I can't remember what it was, uh, and it was like middle of the second half. And there was one where Zoska had a kind of a dodgy pass back, and he puffed his like. Oh no, there was one he, he kind of caught and he palmed it. Straight back out, the defender cleared it. If you remember, mm-hmm. wasn't he a fantastic saver that night? No, and I just happened to be after just after that, I was on Twitter for him. The first comment I read, uh, Lucas Lucas has been very poor tonight. That just sums him up, and I was just like, oh. that kind of sums fucking Twitter up, man. Like, and I just had to put it off again. I can't, I just can't read these fools. I mean, because no. the guy had a great game, let's be honest. And for me, goalkeepers, it has to be hard for a goalkeeper to come in because it's like anything else, you've got to be playing. There's no reserve league anymore for these guys. Do you know what I mean? So he's not really playing football. And to come in and a performance like that, I thought was pretty fucking good. Like, well, I think you know, it's a, I think it's a great point because the people just don't really seem to appreciate how big a leap there is between the under twenty league and then the first team. That's basically what it is. And then you see guys like Zuluska and all that; they get lost in the middle of that, Aye. and they just go to have to pick up games here, there, and everywhere. Um, you know. You just cannot. I mean, this used to be. It's funny, you know. Any time I've done research, say like week or anything like that, quite often they'll have a game that was played, say, in 1993, and then they'll say, "Oh, and by the way, Celtic reserves played at Tyne Castle today, one two 0 and stuff." And that was a breeding ground day. But now it's just like, how many? I, I would love to know how much, how many minutes uh, actual competitive football Lucas Oluska has had in his entire Celtic career, because it'll not be much. Well, that was, uh, they said, uh, Paul, they said in the comment at the start of the game, that was his 50th start. Right. So, uh, I mean, over how many years? It's not a lot, like. <laughs> no, considering he's been there, what, five, four, five, five, six years now, so. Right, at least that. Because he was there when was there, so. Exactly, right. So, I mean, he's there for Fraser Foster's entire career at Celtic. Mm. So, uh, aye, 50 starts isn't a lot. And, uh, I don't know, it's just. I mean, he's an average goalkeeper, but uh, I'm definitely falling in the camp if you're not playing every week. Well, it's hard for keepers. They've got to keep their eye on sort of thing. Um, a bit like strikers, I suppose. But at the same time, I'm not sure I'd be I'd be too keen on him, say, if you were to lose Gordon to injury or that. I couldn't imagine going through a few months of the season with Zalewski and goals. I'd be, I'd be kind of worried at that stage. Like, you know, I think we probably have better backup week. It's kind of no, contradicts I mean, what I'm saying maybe a wee bit, but I don't know. When you, especially when you look and at the saves Gordon done the Europa League, Christ, there's no way he's a loose cover. I've got near me and he missed the name. 
Right, Jason, I'm just going to, if you can just uh, chat away, I'm just going to um, check that for you, the link. Instead of sitting in silence, just chat away. Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> I've, got a big e I've got a big echo here. Have you got an echo, Paul? No, there's no, no, no. no echo at this end, so that's all no. that matters. Um, Jason, I'm just checking, like, it should be on speaker because it, it automatically goes up on Helio Media. Aye. Aye, it did, did go up in the media, like. Aye, because you retweeted right. it, Paul. I retweeted it, aye. Aye, aye right, that's fine then. Oh, can you hear us? That's <laughs> weird, what, What's he done as he put this out? I know, I thought I was hearing voices in my head there. Jason, have you got it on in the background? Aye, right. It's, it's, it's me. Right, sorry. Right, that's, <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Oh, I can't find it on speaker, it's fucking playing in the background. I know. <laughs> so, what, one thing I did uh, a pre on Friday night, I think for Celtic had a, a brilliant support up there, because mm -hmm. usually right. one of the ends behind the goals is normally get quite a few spaces in it. Right. You know, because it's one of the less aspect, a, atmospheric games of the season to go to. You know, because St Johnston have got their usual 2,000 fans or whatever. But uh, I thought the Celtic support turned up in great numbers, so they were a great voice. So, aye, well, happy days. And it was, it was an end of season game, you know, but aye, it was, they don't know, right? But it's, it's just. It's a nothing game. Nobody's ever going to remember anything about that game, apart from young Kieran Tierney, you yeah. know, getting his debut. But uh, aye, it's, it, 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 it was actually quite entertaining. It was quite entertaining to watch. Did you get watching it okay in the Kerrydale suite or were you too nervous? Aye, no, no, it was absolutely fine. I mean, they had, uh, obviously, had two big screens, then they had plasmas all the way around it, so, you know, everybody could dig me. I've got to say, though, I mean, it's not like I was, I would, I'd be lying if I said I was focusing intently on the whole game, you know what I mean? Ah, I can imagine. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, fucking quite a few people were texting me about the game and I'm thinking, what the fuck are they talking about? You know, like, <laughs> just blast past, like, you know, so, uh, but I could think of worse places to watch it, put it that way. Aye, excellent. So, you and else you want to add about the game, Harper? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, nah, not really, I mean, what, what is that to say, like, no? <laughs> it was a nil-nil draw. Young, as you say, the, the young fella made his debut. Maybe he was a wee bit unlucky to go into a team with so many changes, like, no? Uh, no Van Dyke. Denier goes off injured. Uh, could be the last time you see Denier in a Celtic jersey, is it? I don't know if he's fit for this I think weekend. so, aye. Uh, well, I don't know if he's fit, but I think I don't think we'll see him again, no. Aye. Um, could, could be the last time we see well, Van Dyke. Mm -hmm. Especially when you, when you look at the comments made by the manager um, last week at the Q&A, saying he was targeting a left-back two centre halves and a striker. So uh, I don't know if that tells its its own story but um and Big Van Dyke was left out of all the forties for the new strip. Oh, that's right, I, I just thought it was because he was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I say, I was doing it uh, the Everton game at the weekend and on all their message boards it was rife with Virgil van Dyke talk going to them. Aye, so I don't know if there's any truth in that. Aye, so can you can you go into any more detail on that or is that just that or were they, were they mentioning money, were they talking about was there like sort of concrete that he'd been watched? Well, just, or? just all the fans talking about it. And the, 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 the figure they were quoting was eight million quid. But I mean, that, that's, that's them talking, do you know what I mean? So I don't know. And it, I, I actually think it originated from some newspaper article down there. Yeah. But, was it um, was, uh, the dial and all say last week that um, he wouldn't be allowed to go until after the, the qualifiers? Uh, Champions League. Yeah. You see that. Come on, I'll come on to it. Bill so said that yesterday or not that there was an agreement with him that uh, he'll be here for the qualifiers, get through that, he'll be here for the group stage, and then they'll get him a move to a big club. He said last season he wanted to leave and he fucked up his first three months of the season because he, cause he was so frustrated about it. Mm -hmm. But now he's in a different place completely and he understands. You know, they've all been saying to him, you just need to stay another year, you need to stay another year, keep us keep developing. He says, you don't want to go to. He says, you show me an example of guys who go to, like, you know, the, the lower reaches of the English Premier League, like a Leicester or whoever, and then step up to the top four, you know, for Scotland. It just doesn't happen. He says, you want to go into that top right away? And I think that's what they reckon that he'll do, is that he'll be completely focused. And he says, they didn't need to sell him anyway. But, uh, but he also did say that, you know, they was targeting two centre-halves, because obviously Denier, and he said they're well down the road to getting one. Wants competition for the Zagiri and obviously an striker. So, Paul, are you saying that you believe Van Dyke will be here till Christmas? Uh, 
Aye, I think he'll go in January. That would be mm-hmm. my opinion. That's still Because at the end of the day, he's still have 18 months left on his contract in January, so you still got a good fee for him. Mm-hmm. Well, and um, I guess it's a case of saying, I think basically what they say to him is, look, if say you go to Southampton, fine, or whatever, then that's great. But like, you could be here in the Champions League parading yourself in six games on the world stage. Right. And then push yourself into a better move, you know? Aye. Because, um, I mean, I was... We certainly said, like, as long as he stayed for the <clears throat> the qualifiers, we'd maybe be happy with that, but obviously I'd rather he stayed longer, like... Um, Aye. Because I don't think... Uh, you're no cup-tied in the qualifiers, are you? No. And, I, and remember as well, I mean, it fucking struck home with me last night, like, the, you know, here we are, we're playing uh, Inverness on Sunday, which is a 24th of May, I think, and then the players are back on the 24th of June, and the first qualifiers are 16th of July, so it's not like... There's tons and tons of time, bearing in mind that some of our players are playing for Scotland on the 13th of June. Oh, no. You know, no, in no. Ireland, so there's not much time to really fuck about, like, you know. <laughs> well, I was just saying, Vicky, that'll be, like, next week will be the last homeboys for a few months, but really it's for a couple of weeks. <laughs> 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 and even if something happens in between, we'll probably do a show and shit like that, like, you know what I mean? So we'll probably even have to stop. Um, well, it's, it's interesting, like, so let's, I should have had this in front of me, but... Um, I'm not very well prepared. The, the Q&A last week, who who was that involved in it, Paul? Obviously, there was a meeting last night, mm. um, similar to the one that yourself, Jason and Liam attended the last time, but the Q&A last week, who, what was that? It, who was who was represented there? It was, was uh, that? the executive club members. Right. And was it just a Q&A with the manager, or who, I mean, who yeah. else was all there? Aye, it was a Q&A with the manager, aye. Johnny Collins, anybody else? Or the ma- Scott I'm not Brown, really or? sure. I'm not no. really sure, to be honest. Right, so some of the things that were covered was um, some bullet points. Obviously, we've mentioned the players would be targeting. Mm-hmm. He says he would be trimming the squad down to twenty first team players, I believe. Yeah. Um, he, he said that would be a th- the, the pre season would be three weeks long. Mm-hmm. Is it? Um, bizarrely, would be playing a game against St. Mern for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, maybe somebody can fill me in on that. And uh, I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Anyway, mm-hmm. they might they might go away for a week somewhere, but there's not going to be any of these mad sort of no. all over the, all over Europe, America, Australia, and that kind of carry on. I think uh, we we spoke about it before that Dyla said they didn't have a preseason last year, mm. and it's all going to be it's going to be full on this this preseason to to get obviously ready for qualifying for the Champions League. Like Jason, yeah. so I and so. Let's let's go through the players that uh, obviously it's our squad. So I've got this for Skip Power, Lee him uh, as a bit of an anorak. So he posted this on this page today, so I'll just lift it straight for that. So uh, you're talking about you've got Denea, Tonev, Wakaso and Gadetti. So that's their loan deals finished. So they'll mm-hmm. be leaving. Mm-hmm. And Lucas Zaluska's out of contract. So I take mm-hmm. it he's leaving as well. We've got unwanted, so we've got Pookie, Baldy, uh, that for Johnson, mm-hmm. Borichter, uh, Callum McGregor and Dylan McGeoch. So they're surplus to requirements, so if they can get a move or whatever. Then you're looking at, you've got sort of undecided, you've got Rogic, which I think he's maybe got a future after what Dyla was saying. Mm-hmm. Rogic, Skepovic, Ambrose, Stokes, Mulgrew and Forrest. And then you've got obviously big Virgil van Dijk. The likelihood is he's 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 going to either go in the summer or he's going to go and if we get a big enough deal for him, if we get a big enough fee for him in the summer, he's off. But if we don't, hopefully he'll stay. And what you said, right, Paul? I hope he does stay. But then you've got so you've got the basis of your team. You've got Craig Gordon, Lustig, which as Liam said, Lustig, I'm undecided about him either. If we get enough for him, which I doubt we would, I'd get rid of because I think he's a signal. I think he's a tremendous player, but I've just fed up with him. So we've got Craig Gordon, Lustig, Adam Matthews, uh, Izagiri, Scott Brown, Johansson, Henderson, he'll come back. Uh, you've got Armstrong, Gary Mackay, Stevens, Bitton, and Griffiths. Mm. So that's your backbone of the squad. So it's what you can add to that and who the undecided comes in. So that, that's kind of the way it's looking. I think. Uh either Matthews or Lustig will go um, with Daniel Fisher being there. Fisher's the eye. Fisher's um, I could imagine Matthews would probably have more value 
uh, on a transfer aye, fee to, to go back I, to England or something. I don't like get much for Lustig at all, would you? No, that's what I mean. Like Lustig's probably got more value to Celtic than he has the, being at the club than he has in a transfer deal because I can't really see anybody. You know, he's a good player. I can't really see I, anybody putting out a good fee for him. Like you've got to, I think how much wages you see on Rose? What do you reckon he's on, Paul? He'll be one of our highest wage earners. Aye, I would say he'd be in the bracket below. Uh, Scott Brown, so he'd be yep. on anything between 17 and 20 grand a week, I would say. I would think so. I think he's no value being with us at all, Harper. If we mm-hmm. can offload for nothing, I think it's a, a bit of good business for us because he's a signal, as I say. How many games has he played for we signed him? He'll still be under contract, though. Aye, he will be, but I'm saying if we can get rid of him. Well, I just because, can't see anybody else keeping that know, kind of money. You're, if you're, 20, you're right, I mean, probably the likelihood is he wouldn't go because he's getting 20 grand a week with us or whatever. Right. But uh, he's certainly no value for money, and I'm not doubting the guy's ability. The guy's a quality player, but he just doesn't play. Right. Well, no, I don't disagree, but I, I just think that I don't think we well. Do we need to carry three right backs like that when you've got Fisher, who looks good? I think Fisher's a good wee player. Mm. Um, I, I like him. Uh, so I mean, do you need to carry the three right backs? But then you, fucking Matthews ends up playing it as well. Like, so uh, I don't know. Like, you, you probably you definitely need to keep you want it to lose to Matthews for the experience, like. Mm-hmm. For, for playing in Europe stuff like that um, so I don't know um, I think also Stocks will probably go aye and uh, I'm I'm just not sure about Sepovic I don't know I just it would be interesting to see what Ronnie Dyla thinks of him he's obviously his first season has been a damn squib he's not really done anything in games he looked kind of looked alright early on like, looked keen enough that's what he should be he's a fucking football player but I don't know I just I didn't see a lot there. I didn't see a bit of spark about him. There's nothing that gives me a great confidence in the guy, which is maybe a wee bit unfair because he's not played a lot. But there has to be a reason he's not played a lot. Cause he's not been injured, so I just I don't know. I can't. I just can't see us going forward with Sepovic. The manager's talking about wanting a striker, and but we need strikers because, as you say, Gadet is away. Stokes will probably be away. If Sepovic is away, you're only really left with Lee Griffiths. Mm-hmm. So I uh, will definitely need at least one striker coming in if not two. Aye, and I mean, I think, I mean, sort of, I, I would add in you know, the people who will stay Ambrose and Forrest, because I know he rates both of them very highly. In right. fact, he believes that Forrest is now getting back to the player that he should have been just because he's playing. Yep. You know, week in, week out, and he's getting stronger and fitter and more confident. Um, I know he'd say he wants 20, or 21, we include another goalkeeper, and then the youngsters backing that up because he's saying, you know, if you think if you all the players you mentioned here, Jason Kenny or were Castles, that they're the ones that are stopping the academy players coming through. Yeah, you know what I mean. You want to get rid of them and get the academy players through. You mentioned Kieran Tierney. I know he, he's rated highly the most, and you know huge, huge high hopes for him. And and I know Ronnie Dyer was asked what is what was was anything holding them back. He says the only thing holding them back right now is he has to be able to last for ninety minutes. Once he gets that, he'll be in the first team of the week. So there could be, you know, your replacement for Izzy or backup for Izzy, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and certainly as well, I think, you know, the way that we play, I think we, we're really fortunate with the midfield players we've got. Because you know, all the players you mentioned, none of the ones were, all the midfield ones were absolutely solid. You know, Johansson, Brown, Beaton, people like that. Uh, obviously, you've got Chris Collins there as well. Henderson but coming back. Henderson. I mean, Henderson, by all accounts, is pulling up trees in Rosenberg. So, right. um, you know, this there is certainly, but you know, there could easily be a massive clear out and and free up a lot of wages and a lot of you know transfer fees and stuff like that. And it, I think it'd be really interesting to see what type of players Ronnie Dyla actually goes for, because I think we can, you know, be pretty certain that with Castle and Tony or that. Weren't they exactly high on his, his priority list when he first came in, you know? Um, yeah. <clears throat> looks like your man at Hearts, uh, Danny Wilson. There's a lot of talk about him mm. coming in. Uh, I never watched much of Hearts this season, so I don't know what you what you think of him. I, I, I read mixed reports, certainly on Celtic Minded, now people are not too keen. Didn't really rate him, but he's definitely gone somewhere because he said he's goodbye at Hearts. He's played his last game Aye. at Tynecastle. So, uh, I mean, is he a kind of guy that He's young enough still that Ronnie Dyla has an eye on him and thinks, well, he's a he's a young Scotsman. I can put in this team and I can develop and make him better. Um, I don't know if he's a he's a he's a better project, but because he certainly was obviously very highly rated when he went to Liverpool and everything. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously they saw something in him, you know what I mean. But it's one of the ones I think. 
you know, he's no, he's not going to be on big money. It hurts. He's not going to cost anything. And I think Celtic could probably say, well, well why not? Mm. You know what I mean? What have we got to lose here? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know Hertz fans are <coughs> divided on him, and I've never really kind of rated him that highly when I've seen him play against Celtic. But then that's been playing against Celtic when he's playing against top class international football players, you know, once every six weeks or three months or whatever. So maybe being a Rundy guys might develop him. I don't know. I don't know. I know, they're in, I know he's interested in that John Suter. Mm-hmm. Um, he, does, he does like look him, but you know, obviously there's a lot of internal politics going on in Dungan Aid now, and you know the notion of him selling an athlete to Celtic and things like that. So, but he is somebody that he rates highly, like you know, and he's still very young. I think he's only eighteen, still the boy. So, see, the, the thing is, when you're thinking about these players like Wilson and Suter, right, and well, obviously we're saying we think Van Dyke will probably be there for at least the mm-hmm. qualifiers, right? It's the, def- the defence is going to be one of the most important things in the, in the Champions League qualifiers. You saw what happened to us earlier this season. Mm. And uh, I just don't know if like, their boys coming for likes of Hearts and Dungeon United um, would be ready to, to, to just step into that team to play in games such as that. Or certainly, I, I don't know if I'd feel that confident. Um, I, do, do you understand okay, where I'm coming I, for there? Like? I, I do, but I'm, I'm where I think your midfield is. Most important thing, I think if you're midfield at sixes and sevens, regardless of how good your defence is, you're going to get pumped because these teams can overrun you in the middle of the park. And I think if I've got a solid middle of the park, it kind of can breed uh, confidence in the defence. And uh, I just think your middle of the park is vital. Right, well, that's fair enough, but still, do you not still think that I kind of be a bit worrying going in with a young boy like that? Aye, to a certain extent, aye, I agree with you, but if you're talking about you've got two experienced fullbacks, and arguably you could have Charlie Mulgrew as one of the centre halves, which I mm. think is great, but um, aye, and, and if Van Dyke stays, then fair enough. You know, I, I've still no gave up getting denier for another year's loan. I don't know, I just, I'd love to see the guy uh, stay for another year, who knows, but. Do you think there's any chance of that, Paul? No, well, what he said was that, uh, Man- what Man City had said was that Denier was one of their four centre-halves for next season. Right. And, um, but he said, he said he, I mean, you could tell he really wants to stay, obviously, and he really wants to stay another year and that kind of thing. He says, but, he said, the positive aspect of this is, this has been fantastic for Celtic in terms of, we can now say to players, look what we've done for this guy. Come in our team, never played a first-team game. Now he's at Man City, first team. Now he's in the Belgium squad, first team. You know, so this is what we can do. And he said that all the top clubs buy so many fucking players, you know, by top, I mean the ones who make money, that there's just this raft of all these players just kicking about doing nothing and that we can go and get and, you know, try and develop them and all that kind of thing. The other thing to say as well is, touching on what we've had, I was just saying about Champions League and the fourth is, the one thing I'm not worried about, which I think has been apparent in the last few years, is fitness. You know, we're not, I don't think we're going to be... I mean, he said himself, we're 30% fitter than we were at the start of the season, each player. Mm-hmm. He said, which means that he reckoned that he said the, the absolute minimum you can be to play a football match is 70%. He reckons now everybody's at 100. He says, now if people are at 70% and then they miss two weeks and come back, they'll only be at 65 and that's no good. Mm-hmm. Whereas if they miss two weeks and come back, they'll be at 95 and that's still fine. I mean, no, I, I don't think anybody... Uh, would argue against Celtic as far. Celtic's probably the fittest they've ever been since I've been watching them. Mm. I would, I would say, so because okay. I've never seen a Celtic team like this before. You know, even even the formation that we set up, and uh, I've I've seen better Celtic teams, but uh, I've never seen a Celtic team like this before. And uh, I'm really, really excited. You know, and I just, Aye. I just think the world of Dial, and I, I, I totally trust them. So at the end of the day, as long as the board can match his ambitions and. Maybe back him with a bit of cash. I'm not saying twenty million quid, but back him with a bit of cash. And if he's looking to bring whoever in, and as I say, we has contacts with Man City, and if there are any other big teams out there, and it makes me feel dirty saying if there are any other big teams out there like Man City. I mean, mm. Man City will never be as big as Celtic, but in this current climate where cash is king, and that's all that really matters, and it's it, it, it's. it's Pretty sickening to be honest with you, but that's a fact of life at the minute, and that's where we are. So, can, so, I, can I just bring it back a wee bit to the, that list you had, Jason? If you've still got it in front of you, um, right. how many players was that? Because it was specific about the squad number being 20 and wanting to bring four players in, so mm-hmm. that leaves 16. 
if you want to simplify it like that, I mean, was there 16 players in that list? I'd say there was a few more, was there? Aye, there was more than that. So, uh, so some of them were a bit, he'd, he'd missed a couple of looks, so, do you know what I mean? I've not got a list in front of us again, I can't remember what I've done. Right, but, uh, definitely some to go. It was interesting, he, he did comment on Charlie Mulgrew as well. You brought him up, Paul. Um, mm. I think he said that he, he, would play for, he would probably play for Scotland. Um, obviously, he, he played on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, and he says he was looking to get a, a good pre-season at him. Because I thought Charlie McGrew was probably one of the players I'd expect to be trying for the squad, to be honest. Well, I, so, to be honest, so would I. But I suppose if he's thinking about Denier going and maybe Van Dijk, who knows, that kind of thing, then McGrew's something you just see me, see me as F.B. Ambrose. It's like, aye, a lot of guys want to get rid of him. But Christ, if you do get rid of him, then who are you left with? You know and what I mean? Player, I, suppose. Um, I mean, certainly... I mean, I think that, because uh, one of the things we talked about when Jesus mentioned the style he played there with the players, he actually said that uh, from ni- well, from this season now, the under-13s upwards, everybody's playing the same system, the one that the first team plays, and that he has a meeting every two weeks with all the youth coaches to make sure that they're doing that, discussing the players, that, even the guys at 13, discussing their attitude, who's progressing, who's no, who's listening, who's no, that kind of thing. And by all accounts, that's the first time any Celtic manager has done that and in decades, like, you know, so he seems to be certain in building the the whole club in his image, if you like, you know, and I think that's, that is something to get excited about, I think, Jason said, you know, because he's, you know, obviously we're all kind of mightily impressed with him anyway. I know, and that's, see, I know everybody keeps mentioning Barcelona and stuff like that, but that is like your Barcelona model, that the anybody getting promoted into the first team, the other youth teams play the exact same way. Mm. You know, I don't, I don't suppose playing the exact same way. We won't be able to play like, uh, <laughs> to like them. But mm. I think it's just if, if everybody's got the same kind of work ethic and they know what's expected of them, then nobody's coming in and going to get their nose put out of the joint and they realise how tough it's going to be to succeed at Celtic. So if we've got that installed into everybody, then I think we're on to a winner. You know, and I just think, oh, I, just, right. I just hope that Dyla pledges his uh, future to Celtic and stays with us for the next, well, the foreseeable future anyway. I think, I think he'll go into bigger and better things in the years to come, but I just hopefully for the next... Uh, I don't know, four and a half dozen years that uh, uh, he can stay with us and we can reap the benefits. Right. Uh, Definitely. I've got a tweet here. Um, I, can't, I can't even begin to pronounce the name because it's one of these Irish um, spellings of the name, but I'm just going to call him Fred. You live in Ireland. You think you maybe used to it? <laughs> <laughs> I lived in Scotland too, but I couldn't speak Gaelic there either. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was watching, I was watching it was funny, I was watching the Alawa um, Forfer game the other night in BBC Alba and obviously the, the commentary was in uh, Gaelic <laughs> I sat my wife sat, sat in, she sat in for 10 minutes she went can you understand what they're saying <laughs> she didn't realise it was a, a Gaelic channel like no I'm going of course I can do you know can you understand that like she's like you're talking to this that what? tell me you didn't speak Gaelic everybody speaks Gaelic I taught it at school she was like I don't know I don't believe me I'll just make things up just coming out with noises <laughs> now, just to put words in that, but uh, uh, quite bizarre. But so, um, but was it, uh, so Fred says uh, he thinks we could expect some Scandinavian players coming in, players that uh, uh, Ronnie Dyler maybe knows. Uh, don't know, I've not really seen much speculation on that front. I know the, the Dutch fella, uh, uh, is it Willem 2, or whatever they're called? Uh, Willem yeah. What's he called? Just Dyke? It looks like Dyke, so some of these. <laughs> Well, it's no Van Dijk, it's just it's Dijk without the van, is it? It's, it's... I, I, I think the thing, we spoke about this last week or the week before, it's like, I think Dyla's got a strategy of bringing through Scottish players. Mm. I think wherever he, wherever he sets up his camp, he'll be sort of promoting or signing more in the local players and then maybe adding a bit of class from out with, but then they mm. must be able to get the culture. So they fit, they fit in rather than flooding the team with players for everywhere. You know, I think it's I think we've more chance of seeing more Scottish players. But why not? I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that would be his ideal. Maybe have seven or eight Scottish guys in the team, or Irish, I suppose, and yeah. uh, then have two or three quality foreigners that you can go and spend two or three million quid on every year. You know what I mean? And just keep turning them around because... 
I think he's really big on players that understand the SPL. There's this kind of myth that the SPL is really easy and you just need to love them in games and that. And everybody knows that's complete nonsense, you know what yeah. I mean? If that was the case, you know, guy, I mean, and I think Skepovic has thought that. He's coming, ah, oh, this will be a piece of piss, you know, and I'll get to move to the Premiership. No, it doesn't work like that. And so, you know, I think with, uh, he, what, he's, what he's looking at is teams that can prepare and condition their players to be ready to step up, like Mackay Stephen and Armstrong, who just slotted in seamlessly. Uh, and I, you know what? I, I didn't mind that. You know, I think anybody who kind of knows how the league works and, and, and knows how Celtic work and what we're all about, I think it's a bonus. And if they can play football as well, great. You know. Well, let me let me let me put the question to you as another way then, <clears throat> for your own personal viewpoints, right? We watch Scottish football. What Scottish players out there would you think had a chance to come to Celtic? And let's concentrate on. What Dyla said he was targeting, a striker, two centre halves and a left back. Now obviously we've already mentioned Wilson and Suter. Mm. As far as strikers go, it's been mentioned Rooney, Herbert Dean or something that. Uh, Sif, that Sifty fella. Chifke. Mm. I'm, uh, ma- I'm not mad about him, I don't know. Yeah, I think Rooney definitely. Rooney could. A bit of an attitude problem, I think, that fella. Rooney, mm. I, Rooney, good dub. Um, don't know if that helps y- anybody. Young, young boy McGinn for St Martin. McGinn. Um, He's not bad. I must say, I liked him. Sorry, just to, sorry to hear. The guy I liked last week was that Johnny Hayes. He's impressed me a few times right. when he's played for Aberdeen, and he kind of strikes me as a Ronnie Dyla player because he never stops running and working his bollocks off, like, you know? I heard, uh, I heard <laughs> that, that fella, my wife was telling me, like, no, he, he, he's kind of, he's, he played with Rooney and Hayes. He, Hayes for Balaferma, uh, mm. and apparently he's an absolute nutcase. <laughs> he's got a kind of nutcase face about him, isn't he? But, uh, <laughs> right, that's right. Uh, he, he, he was telling me like, that fella is absolutely bonkers. Like he's he's a nutter, like do you know what I mean? But uh, I Rooney, I think I think Rooney. I I don't see see the thing about Hayes. I think we've already got that position covered. If you know what I mean? Um, he likes the Armstrong and Gary McKay, Stephen Forrest. I think he's made sort of in that kind of role, as you know. But Rooney definitely would be one that would, would be interesting for sure. But to me, there's no many players that I look, look around the league and think, oh, I wouldn't mind seeing him in a Celtic jersey at this point in time now. Like, Aye. I mean, there's a few that's... Pre- I mean, the, the boy who's, who's progressed quite well, considering where he come from, is that Greg Stewart at Dundee. And he's been really well with assists and all that kind of thing. Another one to look out for is a boy, Ali Coote. At Dundee United, who they pulled out, he was in the under 17 Scotland squad for the European Championships, whatever, in Bulgaria. They pulled him out of it because he's getting for some first team experience now at Tanadice. And I know he's only been on the bench and that now, but they've got high, high hopes for him as well. So these guys are out there, but of course, I suppose what Celtic want is to be spotting these guys at 14 15 rather than having them. But then, you know, it's, it's harder because. It's harder for them to get through the Celtic system than it is, say, the Dun United one or whatever, and then get the experience that Dun United will give them at 17 or 18, you know. But I certainly do think that they've le- learned the lessons for losing out on the likes of, um, what you call them, uh, Ryan Gold. And I also think there's a small possibility we might look at Andrew Robertson if Hull get relegated uh, this yeah. weekend because, you know, obviously he's Scottish and he was at Celtic mm-hmm. once before and all that. Is a Celtic water? Uh, there could be a possibility there. Like I suppose it would come to the how much money he's owned, which I don't know how much money he's owned. But to put the perspective on, I was tipped to wink that his current win bonus at Hull is five grand. Which to give a perspective on that is ten times the amount of weekly wage you go to Tannadice. Mm-hmm. That's just for his win bonus. Uh, he'll be on. He'll be on more than Scott Brown's on at Celtic. Put it that. Oh, aye, aye. Who, who's who's the young boy at Hibs? I hear everybody raving about. Scott Allen. Is that is that is that yeah, cause people uh, say when he when he's in the team they win when he's not they get beat sort of thing. He, I mean I don't even know anything about him. But I hear boys in work talking about him and that. Ah, uh, he's he was at Dun United and he went to West Brom and he never really done anything there. I never see one too early and he come back and he hibs and he uh, uh, by all accounts he kind of runs the Hibs team. You know, the Hibs have got a pretty strong midfield actually and he's kind of the centre piece of it. Uh, he's a type one diabetic as well and. Uh, has been all his life and you know he's overcome that and, and tears up trees but certainly uh, the times I've seen Hibs he has been the main man like two mm-hmm. willing runners beside him but he will I would put diamonds on it that he will run the show against the Huns in the next couple of games and another player mentioned I've seen 
this is obviously just all speculation. There's the Scottish boys playing in Poland. Uh, oh, the Barry Douglas. Barry Douglas. He was another guy I see mentioned. I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I didn't really remember much. I mean, he was pretty decent when he was here, eh? But done you right to the game as well, wasn't he? Aye, aye. I don't know. He was he was quite decent at done you but I don't know anything about him since he went to Poland, like or how he's done there or whatever. But he is a left back and all that. So. What, what I seen mentioned was um, he was he had a, a year's sort of. He was a thing on his contract that if he played so many games, another year would kick in on the contract, yeah. which which he has played the game, so he has he's, he's under contract for another year. Um, that that's what I was reading. I can't remember where that where I, where I read it somewhere online, but some mm-hmm. somebody um, that maybe worth looking at again because it's a Scottish player mm-hmm. uh, playing a I don't know kind of level that he's playing it, but I don't know. I just I don't know. It's, I I can't think of many Scottish players that that jump jump off the paper at me immediately like North Parkfield were the ones that we've, we've mentioned. Obviously, I just when I asked the question, I wondered if there was anybody. I wasn't thinking about that used that used to could talk with. Uh, I certainly didn't fancy the boy Burns United either. So, so, I don't know. There's just something about his, his attitude. Just I don't know. He just this he just looks like a bit of a prick. Uh, I didn't fancy him at all. Of course, if he came and scored goals, I'd soon change my mind. No, but I don't know. I didn't. I didn't fancy him. And as you say, I just don't know if we're going to get many more players out of Burns United. Like, no. I mean, Christ. I mean, again, it's one of the things where. Because it's done United and it's no certain for that. I mean, there's an internal war been going on there since they sold day two players. Mm-hmm. Fans are going mental, chairman's not happy, manager's not happy. So, um, I don't know. I don't think there's much in the pot at Tanner Dykes, and I think that's a, a kind of weary contention with a few people and stuff as well. So, aye, to, to, to Celtic to go in and try and get a couple of their players again, I think fucking, I think a lot of them would probably be chased for the building, like you know. I see now. There's, uh, there's, there's a young guy, the young guy at Motherwell as well plays up front in Motherwell. Was it Lee Irwin? Aye, I saw it. I said see his name get mentioned. Never right. mentioned that actually. Aye, he's, he's tall. He's just six feet, and uh, I don't. I don't think he's. I think he's only been playing them a few years. Maybe, maybe he's come through the youth academy, but he's only been promoted to the first team lately. But mm. that's him. It's a local thing. A few folk talking about him, saying he's a bit of a player, but there'll be players out there, you know, and it's. At the end of the day, we we the, the market we're going in England, you know, unless we're getting the sort of the youth of the top teams in England, we're going to be paying well over the odds for sort of half decent players coming for the championship. Well, Jason, your man, they're, they're the story of the day. Anya, we're talking about four million. He's 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 all over news now. Celtic today. That's the story of the day. Kitchen, so, you know, uh, he's, he's all right. <laughs> but is it four million quid's worth? All right. No, I know. That's it. I know four million. I mean, you, you kind of wonder, like, it's something I was thinking about last week. Colleagues who were there, I think Jason was talking about the coverage that Sky Celtic or Scottish football, and it starts with that tart and shitey music, and fucking bagpipes, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and you just think to yourself, like, you know, and I know it's been discussed in a few places, like, but has Sky ever got a tip all that? If they give us more money, and by that I mean the Scottish League, then we would get better players, hand bigger crowds, and give them a bigger product. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's just this constant, you know, as you see, and then, like, you know, you, you think you're saying, oh, fucking hell, Celtic are fucking spending four million pounds on a player, brilliant. And then you think, you're Anya, and you go, for fuck's sake, is that it? <laughs> see, see, the thing, the thing, at least last week was at the SPL, they were talking about BBC, about renegotiating the contract. Aye. And at least they're starting to grow a set now and saying you better start coming. Because at the end of the day, they should be able to take... Because the, the licence fee, the BBC is obviously... They, they work on behalf of the, the licence payers. Mm. You know, and at the end of the day, they're not distributing the money fairly. You know, so we've got 10% of the population. Give us 10% of what they give the English Premiership. But they don't give us anywhere near that. So that's right. And uh, I think we get... It's the same with Sky. We've got 12% of... Sky subscribers are in Scotland and we get, I think, 0.4% of what they get in England. Yeah. It's just, you know. I but know. you're right, as a national broadcaster, the BBC and STB are the fucking same and all. Like, I mean, they, they have to, they've got to step up to the plate. And if they can't, you know, if they, if they it turns out we can't afford to buy the rights, well, we'll get fucking in it, get some initiative, get guys in there that can make money for you and yeah. you know, entrepreneurs and, and that it, come up with ways, you know. And it's like, it's like, they should be able to hold them a ransom. 
Because Babel, we should be saying, look, look, this is you're a national broadcaster. You've got a duty to your license holders, so you're not giving us our national sport to watch. Mm. So at the end of the day, we're not paying you the license fee. I don't, mm. I don't know, I don't know from a legal standpoint how that stands. But we really need people within the Scottish game to grow a fucking set and actually challenge them, Aye. rather look, than just taking the pittance that they offer us. It's the same, the same with the, the Sky thing as well. It'd be interesting to see what percentage of Sky sports subscribers. Are in Scotland now. Obviously, we know. That's what I'm saying. Paul just said it's twelve percent. It's twelve percent. Oh, sorry, I never, I never picked up on that. Um, but obviously, like a lot of them would have it for the English Premiership as well. Like, do you know what I mean? That's that would be the sort of counter argument to that. Well, they're not just getting it to watch Scottish football, but at the same time, they're in Scotland. Their subscribers. We, we're just not getting enough money. We're we're just getting treated like shit here. Like uh, as you're saying, that nobody seems to be doing anything about it. Let's don't forget when the last Sky deal was done, which was in the summer of Armageddon, and mm. Doncaster had made such a complete and utter fuck up by selling the league that there was no negotiating system whatsoever for Scottish League to go into Sky because there was nobody else who was going to put. There was no BT then. Nobody else was going to put any money in. So Sky, you can go do say, oh, we want fifty million or whatever. Sky say, well, go fine, go and get it for somebody else because we're only going to give you this, and it'll never change. And nobody will ever fucking try and push it because the bottom line is. You're talking clubs with incomes of, say, I don't know, three million quid. They're getting a million pound a year for Sky. And they're, they've got to turn and say, bye bye, we're, we're just telling you to fuck off now. They'd go bust. And that's a, that, that's how fucking amateurish it is in Scotland right now, you know? We're just getting. And it, it drives me insane when the fucking golf comes on in the summer and the the, 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 the tennis comes on in the summer and it's wall to wall on the BBC and every company pretends like golf and fucking tennis for three weeks and football's the national game. Everybody's mad for it and they never see it. Okay. Yeah, and it's 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 just the we've got guys that run the game, and I'm talking about the club level as well. Mm. That are so an old boys network, you know. They're they're no they're no businessmen with any acumen. A lot of them, yeah. you know, they're just there, and they're just obviously they've got objective set for their chairman. As long as their chairman gets his, I don't know, twenty five grand a year, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's happy, you know. And that this is the way these clubs have been run for years and years. But the thing is. We're getting inconvenienced as supporters. They're changing the kickoff times left, right, and centre. They're Celtic out of the split after the split. We've not got one game on a Saturday. That's you know, right. we, we are the fans that pay the money to go to the games, and we are the fans that's getting inconvenienced to let everybody sit in their arse and watch the game where Scottish football's getting an absolute pittance for the privilege mm. of putting that on the TV for people to sit and watch. Yeah. You know, well, and it's, everything's wrong. Well, this, this is the thing as well. You're talking, I mean, where it really hits people is the home games especially, because eh? you always want to go to Celtic Park to on a Saturday, makes your day. But you're going into seasons where your five of your home games straight away are going to be then, which is going to be the league flag going up, the trophy going up, and then three other games that they want. And it used to be two until the scum were liquidated, and the two would obviously be the two Rangers games. And it was that, you didn't feel it that much then. But you do now because it ends up being fucking Dundee at home or St Johnston at home or some shit like that. You know, what the fuck is this? But then you get people who say, we want to change the league and we want to have 16 teams with it. And the same fucking argument comes back. Oh, but that, does that mean we lose a home game to Celtic? No, this kind of thing. Fucking St Martin. Stuart Gilmore says that we've got to be canny. We can't afford to have Celtic only coming here once a season. For, for, if that's all you're fucking running on, just, just go just just now. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, exactly. You cut your cloth accordingly, you know? Absolutely. No, I totally agree. I think there are people there saying it's it's like basically saying, right, I can fuck it. We've got a two hundred quid budget, and you see, well, how are we going to get two hundred budget? Because I'm taking three hundred it first of all, so you put two hundred left, and that's what they're doing. It's like we'll we'll talk about the money, and as long as I get my cut first, and then we'll start on it. And that's why they can't afford fucking anything. That's why you've got nonsensical things. I mean, you know. St Mirren's a fucking prime example. Promoting Tommy Craig within didn't work, so what did they promote Carry Deal within didn't fucking work. <laughs> and then, and they stand they stand up there and say, Oh aye, well we'll look at them. No, it's not. It's all about money. It's a cheap aye. fucking option and that's the fucking thing. It kills this game. And da- Danny Lennon, arguably one of St Mirren's most successful aye. managers ever. Right. And let's face it, it doesn't take a miracle worker out to understand that Tommy Gemmel was always going to fail there. I mean, that's a guy, it's a dinosaur in football terms. Right. You know, young guys, young guys playing the game, he's coming in, and you're just saying to yourself, what, what respect are they going to give him? And as, as you know, Simone, he's going to be in a totally different wavelength as them. 
Do you know what? It's just it's, it's, his, his, his ship sailed a long time ago in football terms. And as St. Mungan relegated, Danny Lennon's keep my all up in the in the first division, winning the playoffs. Aye. 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 Because it, once, a, once again, this mythical next level appears. He wins them the League Cup, and they said, "Well, right, okay, now he's now he's too short. No, he didn't. That's where you are. That's, that's it. Aye. Level. <laughs> it's so many aye. fucking." horror stories in England we've talked about this every fucking week who put teams who think they should be somewhere and it's like no 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 the money has propped you up to this point you're never going to get any better better example is Charlton Athletic 15 years oh, in the top league oh well, that's a shite like, middle league get rid of them where are they now <laughs> <laughs> I know I know you, you look look at Bolton Wanderers. I mean, they Aye. pushed the boat out. They used to have to fucking jock IF and everything. I know. You know, thinking that they were into the big boys. Look at them now. You know, and Lenny's done well with them, but let's face it, you're not going to do much with that team. And uh, your Burnleys and your Hull, they, they just need to accept it. They need to enjoy the ride while they're there. West Broms and stuff like that. You know, you've got you've got a top core of top teams then you've got the next level down your Everton's and Aston Villas and stuff like that and then you've got the teams that are always going to be fighting up and around there mm. you know but it's this I it's in Scottish football it's very very similar you've got teams like Morton and stuff like that Morton could come and have a good run it'd be in the Premier League you know Aye. Hamilton Aki's have had a good mm. wee run at it but they'll eventually get down again you know mm. and they'll eventually be down but they they just need to appreciate that when they get to it, there isn't a next level for them. When yeah. you've got 2,000 fans that turn up to your home game, there isn't a next level. You competing at the top division is the pinnacle that you can hope for, ever. Aye. Right. I mean, you, it's you, maybe a, a Europe, you maybe get a European uh, spot one year. You maybe like win a cup and you get a shot in Europe. Wraith Rovers did it against Bayern Munich. You know, that's the pinnacle right. for these teams. That is it. You know, you've reached it. The sky, uh, you know, the sky, it's not just about the games, it's about the whole week, you know, the pump in it every single day, all this shit about fucking, you know, Dave Kitson at Stoke or something, nobody gives a toss, they did do that for Scotland, so they just they didn't give a fuck, and they, they basically have created a, a league and a product where money is the god, which has meant the two teams with the most money are top of the league all the time, Chelsea, Man City, but the bottom line is, nobody gives a toss. Like, I, I was sitting watching that Man United and uh, Arsenal game. I was saying, Christ, remember when it used to be, like, this used to be the game in England 10 years ago, ever. And it's like, aye, when was the last thing you tell that when Chelsea played Man City? Need to give us a fuck, because there's no rivalry, there's no real history there, and there's no real glory there that it hasn't been fucking paid for. And, and and that's just what kills the modern, you know, it kills the fucking aye. modern game and the modern football fan, you know? The, the most interesting for me, I mean, the way I see it in England, the most interesting thing that happens is, the fight for fourth place and the fight <laughs> to see who's going to get relegated. Aye. So, I mean, the, 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 actual, the actual title chase, I mean, obviously people say the same about Scotland, but for, for all the way they go on about that league, I mean, there's only two teams going to win it. Mm-hmm. And the rest, the rest, the, the rest of the competition is elsewhere for other prizes. And the actual, the actual sort of Champions League thing is like, it's like winning the league if you can get fourth. That's like winning the league. Aye. People are really caring about the league. They've created this mythical prize for Aye. getting fourth. Aye. You know, it's not. It's a monetary prize. It's not a mythical prize. It's a monetary prize. But the thing is, interesting. I was doing it the weekend, doing it at London, and I went to the Everton West Ham game, and see some of loads of the old Everton fans. How sad is this, right? Everton have got a chance in a fair play, so we're, we're having a laugh. Because West Ham are not running to get it as well. Because England English teams got a place in Europe for being the fair play league, right? See the young Everton fans in the pub when we're talking about it. Oh, we don't want that because like, it's ruined our league season this year. We, we don't we don't want that. Uh, mm. we, we want to have a have a good league season. Like that. How are you going to win the league if you don't get in it? No, no, no. But we finish a lot higher than we finished. It. That's just so we, what? We, then you're not getting European football. Well, 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 it's worth more money finishing sixth or seventh than it is. And you're like, well, see if there's only six teams, the top six, getting into Europe. Finishing seventh and finishing in sixteenth, there isn't any difference. Mm. You know? Mm. Oh, it, ah, but we get more money. I said, do you get money? Exactly. Said, so what, what? What's, your, what's your enjoyment about going to watch Everton? Do you not go to watch them to try and win? Win something and celebrate some silverware? I mean, you just go, you know, they're like, you just go. And they've actually got conditioned that into no winning anything ever and just going right. to the games because that's what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, they're one of the big clubs, 
you know, win the league nine times and things like that, and they just think this is wrong, it's totally wrong, and you've got you've got a chance of European football there, and they're no one to take it because it affects their league form. Right. But I, that's just fucking. It, I can't get my head around that. As a football supporter, the best. Best days of your life is going to watch your team playing in Europe. Mm-hmm. You know, going to away games in Europe on the bus or sitting at the airport, wait, wait to get a flight to some far flung foreign destination, meet all the boys who are there. You're in some mental boozer, and all these locals think you're off your nut, and you just say to yourself, This is what it's all about. You know, and mm. fuck the league for them. You know, that's, that's your escapism, that's your, I don't know, but. It's just, it's just weird. It's you're, just not, you're, not throwing a end, you're not throwing an end of the season party for finishing seventh. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, that's that's weird. Just, I mean, the whole, just, the, whole, the, whole, the whole English setup's just it's sort of fuck. I mean, I mean, look at the, the, the championship, um, but just probably maybe a more interesting league because at, at the end of the day, the, the championship playoff final is the most valuable game of football in world football. They say. Mm-hmm. For, for the prize that's on offer for the money that comes with it right. and, and to me as well contrarily in Scotland I think we really suffer for the fact that we can't get anybody else into Europe you know right. it used to be back in the day at least you know, your team's third, fourth, fifth whatever they'd get, at least get one round of the UEFA Cup or two-legged fair whatever now they get a fucking Raj qualifying game in the middle of July and then that most of them are out by the end of July mm-hmm Right. There's no excitement, there's no glamour, there's no nothing. And as you say, these guys that support, I don't know, your Hibs or Hearts or, you know, Dun I mean, these will be the best memories of their lives when they watch their team abroad or great games when it was all packed out and that would be yeah. different as well, you know. But the, Engl- the Europa League in England's went like the League Cup, we're just like, oh, fuck that, you know, no interest in it. Aye, they, they, they actually don't want to get in it. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the older fan, the older fan is aghast with the younger fan, because the older fan saying to me, he says, well put it this way, that's probably Everton's only chance of playing in the Champions League, is winning the Europa League mm. he says, because he says, the way it currently stands he says, we've got no chance of finishing fourth he says, you know the way, that, look at the funds, he says, look at the players Arsenal's bringing in, look at the players Man United is bringing in, and he says, they're below your Arsenal's, and they're below your Chelsea's and your Man City's what chance have we got even getting fourth? That's a really good point, Jason. That I'd never thought about before because it wouldn't be out, out with the realms of fucking impossibilities for Everton to win the Europa League when you look at the teams that are in the final. Aye. Aye. So like that. that's probably our best chance to get in the Champions League is winning the Europa League. <laughs> <laughs> but he says it's a, it's a long bit. He says, what, what a laugh we'd have doing it. You know what I mean? Just think of that way trips you would get you know so my mates go to all the games so they, they, they love it they embrace it but they're, they're no daft they, they realise that they're, you know they're flogging a dead horse and Paul that's it's, another interesting point you bring up there as well that I'd never really thought about the, the, the other Scottish teams they're only playing against fucking diddy mm-hmm. European size and qualifiers there's no big glamour games for any of these clubs anymore I mean, you'd rather go out in your ear playing fucking Bayern Munich than fucking well, obviously, oh, Bayern is a Champions League team, but do you know what I mean? There's, there's no glamour ties for, for, apart from Celtic. Cut this perfect example for you. You go Harper when fucking Drogada went out to Malmo, and aye. then Malmo took fucking seven off the abs at Easter Road. That's right, aye. You know what I mean? And it's like, and, and, and nobody, and I can remember all the hibbies, because at the, the time the draw was made, they knew they were going to be playing Drogada or Malmo, and there was not one hibby who was like, oh, we're definitely playing Malmo. Okay, and they were, this could go anyway, but that an exang and they were, and they kinda of hedged their bets with the flights and stuff. And then they get fucking beat two out away and think, right, okay, fully Easter Road and that. They get fucking beat seven out of him. Mm-hmm. And and not uh, once does anybody in the Scottish League go, Maybe this isn't working like you know yeah. what I mean? Bring the season uh, forward two months, summer football, they've got to do something. You know? Look at uh, Pats last season. Well, this, well, this season, last season for parts, but it was this season in Europe. They gave Lega Warsaw a better game than we did. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're looking at out with Celtic, right? Out with Celtic. I can remember Atletico Madrid played Aberdeen. So they, they had them in the Europa League. Aye. What, was the, what was the other biggest team that's came to Scotland out with Celtic? When can you, uh, when can you remember any team of no coming to Scotland? Like Bayern Munich played Aberdeen about five years ago. At Petondry, it was a, it was a, it was a group stage uh, game, it was a two-all draw. 
they got beat, or they got yeah, beat away from home. They played Real Sociedad, I know, I think, last season, Aberdeen. That's right, they did, though. Ah, but, that's when they get but, into it, wasn't well, it? I mean, in terms of, well, take in for Hibs and Hertz, I mean, Hibs have been in the, I, I, I might be wrong here, but I think, Hibs, I think Hibs have been in the year for proper since 2001, yeah. when they played EK Athens and got beat. Um, that's right. That was at 9 11 because I was working at Edinburgh Aye. Airport that time. Aye. That's right, and the game got cancelled. Uh, That's right, because I knew a boy I worked with, a boy I used to work with, he, he was a hubby and he'd booked up to go to uh, Athens and whatever. And Hearts, they played, they, 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 quite recently, they played uh, Dinamo Zagreb, didn't they? They did, die. they got beat 4 out away and won 2 out at home, I think. Some, uh, um, and they also, they also played, what English team did they play? Was it. Uh, Spurs. Aye, they put Spurs, didn't they? Five now at home. They're not playing they Liverpool. Now, now, now they're in no, there or something, weren't they? They played Liverpool, did they not? Aye, they did. Aye. Because your man Templeton signed for Rangers then the day after that. That's right, aye, aye. <laughs> so, aye, so it's like, but you just say to yourself, and this is where I think Celtic need to play their part. Celtic need to, Celtic, I think I've got, a lot of Celtic fans don't think they have, but I think we've got a, a responsibility to Scottish football. To help make it better. We have because and, uh, it helps us at the same time. We exactly. Help us that's that's the exact us. same. It's the same kind of point Paul made about Sky. Celtic have got a responsibility to make Scottish football better and then by in turn it makes us better. But see if we're always take, 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 then that's not a bit... But, but also, you need to... I know I keep going on about these higher league teams, but we need to get teams in the league that can bring something to the table. And uh, Ross County can uh, Inverness approved. I mean, this social experiment, it's not worked. You know, they, they're never going to have a support. No. They're never going to have a support. You look at how much they're going to bring in a Scottish Cup final. Mm. You know, this will be the this is the biggest game in their history. They'll not bring ten thousand. You know, and it's just it just doesn't work. Well, exactly. I mean, I'm you know, when we were all growing up going to football pretty much every away game you went it was an event you know what I mean it was and, aye, and it, aye. that sort of dissipated a wee bit but we know next season that we'll have at least one event at Tyne Castle that'll be a sell make a you know quite possibly Easter Road would be an event you know they'd probably get a bigger sport because they'd be on the up again kind of thing and that's good you know that is good because it's something to look forward to and all that kind of thing Tanadice is becoming less and less of an event Petortri's even becoming less and less of an event because if you just win there all the time you know what I mean what you want is, I mean, the last kind of thing I can remember outside of the Huns was when Hearts won the first eight games of the season and came to Celtic Park. It was 60,000. The atmosphere was absolutely crackling. Yeah. You know, and you just need that. And I agree with Harper. It's like, you need to have challenges. Yes, <coughs> everything. You know, Europe, the lot. Get the fans back in the game. and other. But, you know, it, it, it doesn't benefit us you know, just horsing teams every single week, which at times over the last few years is exactly what's happened, you know? Yeah, but I think the way Dial has got obviously setting the team up, he's set the team up so that we can. We've said about this all season. Well, since since we got inside him after the first couple of weeks of this <laughs> season, but we've said that it, we're really looking forward to Europe next year because mm. we can kind of take a league form into Europe and just play the Aye. same way. Exactly. Hopefully, it'll work for us. Yeah, Aye, it's seamless. Definitely. And that's yeah, because we've not been kind of horsing teams in Scotland, although we we we, we have scored. Wise we've not been, but if I actually look at the game, we've been destroying them. You know, we've had some two and three 0 victories, and we've actually we've destroyed them. You know, we've had also been even we, we lost one 0 game at Celtic Park this season. I think we had about 16, 17 shots a goal. You know, and it's there's there's just things like that when you've got that much pressure in Europe. You know, if you if you can play that way and you can put teams under the cosh and you've got a strong midfield and you're getting goals for everywhere, then I think it bodes well for Europe. But time will tell. But I'm very very hopeful. But I just think I just wish the powers that be in Scotland. I, think, I wish we'd a full clean it and the folk that run the game. To be honest with you, but I wish we'd people in there that were a bit uh, uh, inventive and actually took a took a chance here and there. And, so they got some investment in and realised that that is the national sport of Scotland. They keep because mm. they keep comparing us with Wales and Ireland. Bullshit. Rugby's a national sport of Wales. Ireland, you've got three sports above mm-hmm. football. You've got the two Gaelic ones, and then you've got rugby. And mm-hmm. uh, I just think Scotland is so far in front of these nations. 
Scotland's in, in football terms. And just everybody in Scotland is fit by daft. And we've got a product here and we need to try and sort of market it the best we can and try and sell the game, you know, because I don't think it's as bad as everybody makes it. As I say, mm -hmm. I, I was I was in Upton Park on Saturday watching Everton v West Ham. Must have been £150 million pound worth of talent in the park. And it was fucking pathetic. Honestly, rubbish. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Garbage. Mm -hmm. You're just like... <laughs> You know, the amount of money they get, and that's push. Aye. So it's just, I get fat. Aye. You want some Celtic games in your Celtic, Celtic play, I think Celtic would beat either, or, either team. I, I mean, listen, I, I say I watched that Man United Arsenal game, and then you've got, you know, Man United scored and Arsenal equalised, and then fucking five minutes into the team goes up. And Man United could have played for the next fucking ten years and no scored. It was right. pathetic. I mean, they were dead on their feet, and Arsenal are just kind of careered about. Arsenal had the one toast, and they couldn't. Put the killer blow in. And I'm thinking to myself, fucking, exactly, you're talking under, they're probably a fucking billion pounds worth of players on that pitch. I know. They were garbage, man. Utter rubbish. How, yeah. how dysfunctional a league is it when you actually think that, I mean, see, next year, there is no chance an English team will win the Champions League. Is they're just so far behind um, your Barcelona's, Real Madrid's, and Bayern Munich's. I mean, they're talking about that boy, uh, Falcao, that Man United paid £20 million pound to bring on loan. For one season, he, he would get a game. He would get a game for us. He's fucking hopeless. He's like a poor man's Tevez, just, just ambling about and all this kind of thing. You think to yourself, this is fucking nuts. Like it's utter madness, you know. And, and they, oh, the main guy's not playing today. And I'm like, oh, they must be talking about something really nice to do. Fucking Michael Carrick. Aye, not a bad player in that, but Jesus Christ, we're talking about Man United here. <laughs> Bobby Charlton sitting his eye, Michael Carrick, me and him, you know, seen pegging, you know. Fucking hell. Jason, you, you mentioned Irish football there, and one thing Irish football has there, or Scottish football, I think, is um, the summer football. Uh, Aye. I mean, it coincides, I mean, a lot of it, they, they, made, they, they, needed, they, need, they, know, they knew they needed to do something. You say it's not, the, it's not the number one sport in the country. They need to get more people into games. And all right, it coincided with the Celtic Tiger a wee bit, and there was a lot of full-time teams, and maybe they went a bit too daft. Spending money and those clubs at Drogheda were full time for God's sake. Like, but Drogheda were with, they went through the post in Northern Dynamo Kiev at Champions League qualifier to go to the group stages. Shamrock Rovers were in the group stages not long ago. As I say, Pat's put up a good showing as Warsaw. Probably probably should have won that tie actually and played us. And the, the, and that sort of stems for summer football. For me, that begins and ends with summer football here in Ireland. Mm. And that gives them the, the advantage going to Europe and it's, and it's bought bigger crowds. Because like the, I mean the top the, the top team in Dublin will get a gates over three thousand every week, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but for a country this size and against other sports, moving right. it to a Friday night summer football, that's that's how you get people out to games, like no, and that's right. how the, the clubs it's are doing not, better. It's not just that the vast majority of folk in Ireland support an English team. Well, I don't know. So that so that isn't even their team. You know, they, a lot of them would follow Man United or whatever before they would follow. Aye, but see the thing is, like, or or see the thing is, see before they switched to Friday. I mean, that's why they went to Friday night football. Because if the mm. games were on a Saturday afternoon, people just wouldn't go, wouldn't go to the games because they'd, they'd rather sit at the pub and watch whatever English games coming on. Aye, Do you know what I mean? Aye. So uh, what, what I'm trying to get at is, though, at least they, they seen there was issues and they made moves. Yeah. To, to, to sort of to radical moves, like you no. Know? Summer football and Friday night football was, is, would be... If that happened in Scotland, for example, and I wouldn't be saying we should go to Friday night football, but it would be a completely radical thing. Mm -hmm. But everybody Aye. just seems to go, oh, you can't, well, you can't do that because that's just not how things have been. <laughs> but see, the thing that you see there, Harper, as well, right? My laddie plays for Spartans, right? You're under 14s. Aye. His season finishes... Sorry, finished last Sunday. Mm. So, and then the, 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 the season starts again in August. So you've got the whole summer, the great weather pitches and that, they're not playing. It's terrible, isn't it's it? It's unbelievable, It's man. criminal. It's criminal. Aye, and, and you know another thing mentioning kids? The amount of kids that play football at the weekend was probably helped in Ireland as well with crowds because they can go to the games on Friday night Aye. because they'll be playing the next day and they, can't, they wouldn't be able to go and watch the teams on a Saturday and a Sunday and stuff like that. Aye, it's a good point, Link. Aye, it's, it's, I mean, it's absolutely criminal, you know, and, but what can we do? You know, what can we do apart from the Mona and Bollocks are? But okay. I, and I, I hold Celtic accountable for it. Because I think Celtic, we are the most powerful voice in the country. We've supposedly got the sharp-suited man at the front of things. And I just think there is, 
It's so insular looking and it's so short term thinking. There's no there's no there's no great appetite to improve the game in Scotland. See see a thing and all a Celtic supporting point of view. See that like, we've got we've got a load of our fans that are obsessed uh, with what's going on at Sevco and stuff. That pisses me off no end as well. I couldn't give a damn. But see when you talk about extending the leak and things like that, for the first thing came out, oh, that's only because fucking Sevco. I'm not interested in Sevco. I think we need a bigger leak. I just I just think we do for the benefit of the game. I just think but everybody's it's this insular thinking that oh they need to do this because it's going to help them, this is going to help them. I just think the game needs a radical, radical change. You need to stop playing each other four times a season. That, that, that's, that. that's the corrupt thing in this country. Because we've got chairmen, you know, like clubs like Dundee and clubs like Dundee United, that when Sevco, if they get promoted <laughs> into the top league, they will do everything they can to make sure the two big teams are at their ground four mm. times a season. You know, and that's all they care about, is these mm. game money. You know, and it's... It, I, mean, it, I, I couldn't give a damn about Sevco. I don't care if Celtic ever play them again. I care about Celtic. But by caring about Celtic, I care about Scottish football and I, I want Scottish football to get better. And we need we need changes in the game because the way it's run at the minute, it's running into the ground. That it's, it, but they're in danger of eh, still being a football daft nation, but having these following English teams and following bloody Real Madrid and Barcelona and shit like that, you know. Right. And I'd, I just think we just we, we need radical, radical changes. But I don't okay. think the soups have got the appetite to do it because all they care about is their wage as far as I'm concerned. Well, you know? that's, that's maybe a good wee segue. And, and uh, we're talking about what's the manager's plans for the future we mentioned earlier and what's Celtic's plans for the future. We mentioned at the top of the show, Paul, you were at a meeting at Celtic mm-hmm. Park last night. So what was that all about? What, who was there? How did it go down? And... What can you tell us for that? Um, it was a kind of, it was a very much informal, a lot more informal than the last one. Uh, it wasn't like everybody sitting around a big table or anything like that. It was just kind of people sitting chatting and stuff. Um, and there was Ronnie Dial was here, Peter Lawwell, uh, Adrian Fulby, uh, Kevin McCullen, who's like the multimedia guy, Ian Jameson, the PR guy. And, um, you know, pretty much everything that we have discussed have, was discussed, you know, from the supporters angle in the sense that they're all as frustrated as we are and, you know, and, and it's a thing and, and sort of, you know, there's a lot of kind of, there is this sort of thing in Scotland now where it's it's us and then it's the rest of the Scottish Premier League and we're on two different ships going in different directions, you know, whereas, you know, we could survive anywhere and they, they could survive without us and for that, on that basis, everything's going to be Delve towards them because obviously you need you know to play in the league you need to pool your money you know it comes to the TV and all that kind of thing which means absolutely nothing to us and everything to the other clubs mm-hmm. um, and they, like you say they couldn't, couldn't give a toss I mean they're high got happy oh we get a TV deal we don't have to do much for it you know everything's fine um, and that's really I mean certainly <clears throat> I mean the TV deal is something that's been continually talked about and stuff. Uh, it is up next year, although Sky do have an option. Um, SPL TV was explored again, but the numbers weren't great. Approaches were made to the Discovery Channel, Netflix, Al Jazeera. You know, would they show it and all that kind of thing? And there wasn't really any interest. Of course, somebody quipped that they should, could should, uh, go to the History Channel for Rangers. Um, oh, but I, oh, this kind of thing. And um, but Celtic, you know, I. I they didn't seem to be overly worried about the state of Celtic because they continually impressed that we're not viewed with the rest of Scottish football. You know, an example being um, the current, the new, new, the new balance deal. There was, they say there were six offers uh, from other companies, you know, top sports brands, and the reason that New Balance got that was because New Balance, along with Liverpool and Port Ross, said we're going to make you your top three. Um, and they said, in terms of shirt sales, Celtic are in the top five in the world every single year. On a good year, we're number three. On a, average, a normal year, we're fighting out for fourth and fifth in Milan. So, you know, companies are flying in there trying to get us. Um, whereas Nike, um, effectively, weren't that bored, you know, and sort of that kind of thing. Uh, and certainly in terms of the the merchandising as well as for the first time Celtic have brought that back in house 
So kit bag used to be the thing, you know, so therefore you'd be buying off them if it was online and stuff like that. Well, that's changed now. And see, like, I've kind of broke away from that kind of thing. So, and they're looking at things like click and collect and all that kind of thing that you can do with other places and stuff like that. Um, there was, obviously, people talking about the pricier strip, um, <clears> which <throat> I believe is fifty three ninety nine, And they said something. I mean, it, you know, it didn't go too, too well, it has to be said, that, that they were initially looking at forty eight ninety nine, but thought people would then perceive it as being, oh, that's, in brackets, cheaper than Nike. It's like, well, aye, that's kind of the point. But... They didn't know what kind well, of want that. that. They, they, they didn't say that, did they? Aye, like they would be perceived because they say that they've had a lot of negativity towards New Balance for supporters in terms of being a cheap old brand and all this kind of thing. And they would try to emphasise that. They also said um, that the sport, the Sports Direct had kind of destroyed the football strip market to just destroy JGB Sports, which was, I think, mm-hmm. Dave Whelan's company. Mm-hmm. Now their strips are back at the same levels as they are, roughly. We, um, see, like, we see the, the thing that they can do is, um, for example, I think they're selling a home strip, selling home strip for 45 quid, and funnily enough, they're selling a Safeco home strip for 48 quid. So I don't know what the kind of story there is. And obviously, they like sell for three seasons, but they'll be able to buy 500 million quid's worth of stock and then they'll, so they'll get like a 30, 40, 50% reduction, whereas we can't do that because obviously we've only got, you know, two or three stores and, and that's that kind of thing. So that is kind of one of the things. Um, what else? See, see, uh, just, see, just on the New Balance thing, for, just for a minute before you go on, like, <clears throat> I don't understand fans sort of, who, who, who actually cares who makes the strip, the name on it? Like, as long, I, I, as, long as, they make honest, a, yeah. know, as long as they make a good kit for a start, right? And it's for money. But wait a minute, wait a minute, Jason, right? I don't think people realise how big a company New Balance are worldwide. Right? I know. Under Armour falls into their territory. And we know it's because they've never made football strips before, really. I think that's... So people are just sitting going, oh, well, they're not a big company. They're a fucking massive company. And I think one of the things they said at the launch was that, unlike Nike, eh, New Balance will really push the strip in the United States Aye. and stuff like that. They'll carry it in all the, shop, all the stores, whereas Nike didn't, eh? That's exactly the reason they gave for uh, taking name because they said that that was their big bugbear every night was that the amount of complaints that people in America are still saying you can't even buy the strip. Right. And because and, and, the other thing was the quality control. I don't know if you had forgotten about this, but I remember, if you remember when Knight first took over the strip, it was in 2005, the first strips that people bought, the colours were running in the wash. And uh, they had to rely on Nike's quality control and all that kind of thing. Whereas New Balance actually put in the contract that they'll guarantee, you know, the quality and that it will be replaced if it wasn't, which is a big thing for them because, you know, it's like some people were waiting months on end to get replacements and that. It was a total fucking nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're really, as I said, they're really happy to be in control of the merchandising now because, you know, I see it's just a constant fucking pain in the ass where a fucking kit bag would be responsible for one thing and then they'd be responsible for another and a lot of people just kind of fell through the cracks um, regarding that, you know, but they certainly, um, you know, and they have been, they say that it's been by far the biggest um, pre-orders they've ever had for any shop and there will be three new shops over the course of the summer because obviously it's a new deal and they did say, you know, because people they, they kind of emphasised that we didn't just take the biggest amount of money because we wanted to get it to all the fans and people were a bit sceptical about that and they said well for, we'll give you an example you know we've touched on this earlier we're going to stay at Lennox Town for pre-season we're going to play three games in Scotland and that is it we are not going to leave the country full stop end of story New Balance were not very happy with that at all because obviously they wanted to go to America or wherever and they said no absolutely it's good for us to get in the Champions League so that was them kind of saying this is a way we, we sort of try to put the team first rather than just take the money but uh, and in terms of that I mean it was just a lot of other back and forth stuff about you know honest mistakes the media all that kind of stuff and it was a lot of back and back forward they can't really there'll, there'll be things that they'll bring out because of that that kind of get mentioned now with the minutes but um, there, I mean it was quite a sort of convivial atmosphere I would guess and I say Ronnie spoke for 20 minutes at the start and and blew everybody away as he always does. I mean, the guy, he's the coolest guy in the world. He, he walked into the place, the last guy in, I was in seconds before him, and he um, had a, a pair of stonewashed jeans on, a pair of Timberland boots, and just like a normal Celtic hoodie he would buy in a Celtic shop. Mm. 
you know, and I thought, like, he wasn't like a cheering top or anything, you know, I was like, what the fuck? And he just sat in and he just created his, he gave his vision for next season and, and beyond, you know, about what he wants to do and stuff like that. And so he was talking about how we've improved, his, you know, in terms of the first 19 games to the next 19 games, we scored 1.7 goals in the first 19 games, 2.6 in the next 19 games, and it took a lot more points and that kind of thing. And everybody can see the progress, but, you know, he's still not 100% happy and he wants us to keep kind of pushing on. And um, even to the extent we are. Um, you know, somebody was saying, well, you know, you said about the pre-season, but we always seem to take this week in August where we fuck off somewhere and then we lose another home game or whatever. And he's kind of like, yeah, it wouldn't be my... You know, Peter Law, even Peter Law, says, I says, we did, if we didn't have to go, we'd only go. We'd take a big, big offer, you know, he says, because we reckon that, you know, we want to keep as many home games as possible and stuff like that. And, um... Because there are... Because effectively, the SPL give you two jokers in a season where you can basically cancel two two games a season or your own games but of course fans for Ireland and stuff are saying well fucking hell man you're already telling us we've got five home games that are not going to be on a Saturday there's another two your own choice there's not really even many left and put in terms of the value of the season ticket one of the things that got pressed on was the season ticket uh, in terms of the, the price increase and the terms and conditions for this if Sefco was to appear which they categorically stated has no been uh, there's not been any decision made on that whatsoever. But for example, one of the benefits of the season ticket thing is to get two free tickets for a game for friends. And one of the criticisms was, but they're only available for the ticket office. It's, you know, it's not really helping somebody stay in Aberdeen or Dublin or wherever. And he said, no, no, what we're going to do is, as soon as the fixtures come out, we're going to pinpoint the fixtures over the season that you, as a season ticket holder, can then, you know, get your two free tickets for. And then you can just tell us and we'll send them out to you. So. That was one kind of thing. So, hi, it was good. I mean, it was worthwhile. It was more relaxed and, and kind of less confrontational. I think. I mean, it's still a wee bit shouting and whatever, but you know, it was good. It was good. It was good to hear Ronnie Dyler, You know. Aye. Right, so to pick you up in the bit about the season ticket, Paul. I, I was one of the ones on Twitter that was giving John Paul Taylor at tight because of the wording of it, and they says there's nothing being decided. So why did they put the big spiel on the the renewal application? Yeah, well, I, I mean, especially especially the part the part that obviously the, if I've got kids' season tickets, uh, my kids mm. need to pay full price if Sevco get into it. And yeah. then the caveat after that, they're not guaranteed their own seat. So I take Aye. my two kids, thirteen and ten year old, and they get told they're in the they're sitting in it next to the Green Brigade, and I'm at the other end of the stadium. Aye. So how does that work? Out? Well, basically, the, what that was was that's how it was in two thousand and twelve, and and before that. Because when they brought the price this thing to get to, so there was a lot of anger about that, obviously, right? And it, and and funnily enough, a lot of it wasn't just like, oh, you're legitimising them. It, it was that point you just made. So I'm going to get my kids fifty quid, and I've got to pay another fucking this amount of money. So it's basically like another hundred quid I've got to pay just to get them a season ticket. And Lawwell was certainly a bit shocked by it, and he said, look, you know, this isn't anywhere near as a set in stone. And the argument everybody was giving is, right, let's just say they do come up, right, and let's just say you've got to charge 45 quid to get in, and then the next game doing would be uh, Hertz, which would probably charge 31 quid or whatever. Is it really worth the extra kit with 100 grand to inconvenience season to go with us, legitimise him and all that kind of thing? And Lawwell, to be fair to him, did say, no, it's not really. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't imagine that will happen, like... So, but, but the thing is, they say that in, in the renewal form, how fucking amateurish is this organisation? Do you know, see where I'm coming from? See if that's no set in stone. Does he know? To get, does he know need to sign that off before they send that out? Or does the marketing department just get that They send it well, out. Aye. aye, aye, the marketing department. They're the ones that are in charge of it. It's your agent, Bobby's and that. And... Absolute fucking imbeciles. Imbeciles. And I'll tell you, it's Lowell's watch. So at the end of the day, he lets them send it out. Because I'll tell you, I was that close to phoning them up and telling them to ram their fucking season tickets. Because I was raging when I read it. And then they turn around and says, it's, it wasn't meant like that, or it might not go ahead. Well, why fucking put it on it? You know, it, know. Just, it, it, it stinks of shite. And it stinks of telling you that the club is ran by imbeciles. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing that gets me, Paul. See, see, you know, see the I, thing love, that... I love the football. I love Ronnie Dyla. I love the way the football is getting played. And that's, in simplistic terms, as a football fan, that's all I really care about. But they've created this customer 
customer vibe and you pay for this, you pay for that. And it's a capitalist sort of society we live in now and players get paid mega wages. So you are paying for a wee bit more and I take my two kids along to football and I'm getting told this and then it's getting maybe saying Peter Lowell didn't know about it. And you know, it fucking it, it drives me potty. And I'll tell you, I'm I'm our own the verge with them. You know, I, I really mean that. I, I am definitely on the verge. Cause, and another thing, see, see when I stop going, I'll never go back. Do you know what I mean? And they're pushing and pushing people like myself. They've already pushed 20,000 out the stadium. And they're mm. pushing and pushing people like myself. And see when I stop going, I will na- I'll get into the habit of not going and I will never go back. You know, and that's, that's, that's actually how strongly I feel about this at the minute. You know, because it pisses me off. They're so fucking amateurish. Ah, so I mean, insular. It, that, that was echoed in the room. I mean, I think, you know, initially I think there was a kind of um, attitude that just brushed us off. And there was just no way that was going to happen because everybody was fucking raging about it. And, um, you know, need to say this, but if you want my opinion, I think somebody, somebody at the highest highest level, maybe no law will, but somebody near them took a flyer on this and thought we can just slip that in. And, you know, that's what we did in 2012, and we can just slip that back in. And it's, it's came back to bit of an ass. And they say they've created this situation, bearing in mind that fucking Seth Corn even in the league at this minute. So why even bother mentioning it? That's the most baffling thing. But I do think if my, if my, my criticism of Celtic as a whole would be there are not enough people at that club who live in the same world that we do. And therefore, these things never cross their mind. Aye, it's, it's got to be, you know, but the thing is, I think it's, 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 it's I mean, I, the job I work in, right, if I'm putting a communication out there that's going to major stakeholders, and by major stakeholders you're talking about your customers or any, any, of the, any suppliers or whatever, any of that has got a direct impact on this communication, I've got to get that signed off by upper echelons big time, and it's got to get proofread, and everybody's got to go through it by a fine tooth comb, because see the ramifications of me making a fucking James Hunt to that? It's incredible. And these idiots can just launch anything out to us and we just take it. Well, at the end of the day, they just need to look. 20,000 people. I mean, they actually used, they used the, they, they met, I work with figures as well, so I can mess about with figures, I can mess about with bar charts and show things to look more, <laughs> better than they actually are. But they, they actually say there's, there's been a, a reduction in the season tickets and then the caveat is from three years ago no there's been a 50 quid increase just tell us there's been a 50 quid increase and stop treating us like fucking idiots right. well, that's, that's, well, that's what it was that's what it was a few years ago means fucking nothing this crack exactly. that this like crack that there was not you know, uh, this, this crack that there wasn't a child season ticket there wasn't a child tickets for Huns games when the Huns were there but what the fuck's that could do anything right you, you made a 50, 50 pound season ticket to try and fill the stadium, to encourage kids to come to the games, and then you're going to punish them. When Sevco arrive, uh, that that's not on for me at all. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. Jason, you, you mean you you read the thread that I read the Celtic minded, and your Celtic fans out there apologise. Just what you're talking about, but that's the way it was before. So fucking what? We're living in a different world now. Everything's different. Everything changes. Hey, you get say like five, they can start charging you to go to the toilet. They'd say, well, they're quite right. You know, it's it's changing times and they need the money. You know, you get, you get all the apologists that will actually be like that. But at the end of the day, they've created this environment now. That there is an us in name. You know, if they want my hard earned cash, so they need to earn it. And I'll tell you, I, I love Celtic, I mean, Celtic's a thing I love to the day I die, you know, and it's just a thing that's in me. But as modern football goes, I'm getting majorly hacked off with it in all, all regards, and it would break my heart because football's something I love for, you know. But I'm, I'm, I kind of love the principles as well, and there will come a time that I reckon I'll maybe just jack it and I'll just say, nah, you know what, forget it. Well, see, this, see, the thing is, like, I, I think there's, there's far too much for them that's like, right, well, we've sorted that out and that's it. And you go, well, you have they sorted this out? And I'll give you an example, right? The student season ticket, the trumpeted is, oh, it's 199 quid. Now, initially, that was you had to then move to some shitty area in the green, which was like a way up in the corner or whatever, right? But then it was, no, 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 if you're a student, you can stay in your own seat. Now, but here's the pro- here's the process, right? And as a student, I fucking know this inside out. What you're supposed to do is buy an adult season ticket in the summer. Then when you go to university or college, you get a letter and a stamp for them and you have to hand it into Celtic by October the 9th and then you get the, the money back that you're due. 
So in other words, they're asking students to pay the full whack for a season ticket in the summer when students don't have any money. Then they're asking them to turn up at university, which starts majority which at the end of September, and have a letter that says that they attend that university in at Celtic by October the 9th. What university worth their salt is going to say, ah, you come here every week, and you've only been here a week? And, well, and that's what, and, and the fucking whole process is. But again, they didn't live in that world, and they didn't, so it doesn't affect them, so they think, boom, that's it, done. And it really hit home to me, was it last year or the year before? I think it, was, it must have been the year before, right? I would been to a Hibs Hertz game New Year, and they were advertising student season tickets uh, for, for 30 quid. 30 quid for the next for the, the remaining nine games at Easter Road. You could buy a season ticket for 30 quid if you're a student. When Celtic went there three weeks later, I was in the Celtic end and paid 32 quid for my fucking ticket. And I could have watched the nine fucking games. So you see the fucking difference between what happens to the you know, students and why. And there's fucking thousands of students out there that would probably buy this if they had the money. But as you say, they've got to live in the world. You know what I mean? It's like that fucking... What to call it? The program where the bosses go in and actually work with the workers. That that I think that's something that needs to happen. Right. They need to see what goes on on the ground. Cover Under boss. Cover boss, right? See but it's, it's the, the thing is, seeing any walk of life, seeing seeing any any industry whatsoever to survive as a going entity, you need to know your customer. Mm. Come on, they haven't got a fucking clue who we are, mm. and I, I honestly mean that. They're, they're fucking so far out of touch. As I say, I went to that last meeting with you, and the guys for the, and I, I'm, I'm not making any apologies here, the guys for the CSA, and the guys, genuine Celtic supporters, right, but they represent a bygone age. You know, I don't know any buses that are members of the CSA any longer. You know, things things have moved on. The Celtic Celtic disbanding, given the Celtic Supporters Association tickets, they hand out to You know what I mean? Now, they've got to do it themselves. Celtic sort of destroyed that. So, the network, the guys tireless, they put their time and effort and they run supporters buses. There's still some crack supporters buses out there and some will be members of the CSA. The guys of the CSA do great jobs, they're no down crying them, but they represent a bygone age. So Celtic have no clue who their customers are. And you can tell by the correspondence that they send us. They're treating us like absolute bugs. And as I say, they're 20,000 down and their season tickets but they're like because they they only got a four year contract working there and they've got, they're meeting all their expectations for, for Dermot Desmond and things like that so exactly. it's, do you know it's, it's they, they, they don't care about the longevity of the club they exactly. don't care about anybody says and Jason exactly and that to keep coming back to the same point the thing about the, the kids season ticket 50 quid if there's going to be two games against Sevco well, they, 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 they didn't account for those games that's going to be an adult ticket because they didn't care because they know they'll sell the stadium at, at those prices and then they get the money. And that's the first thing they think of first. Rather than the, the side that mm. you've got a, a young a young Aye, kid that's been there for three seasons. And that's what, that's what comes down to. As you say, they didn't, the, 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 the guy whose job it is, he's thinking, how do I, get the, how do I make the most money with this? Because he's not going to be paying it. Aye. You know what I mean? He's, you know, they'll get in for now. I mean, you know, so... But that that to me is where where it falls down is they're making the decisions they need to be paying as much as we are and they're not. Right. Right, that's I mean <sighs> these guys see the end of the day, see if we were in that job, would we think any different? You've got a family to feed and you've got a house to pay. You know, you're looking as a as a job, mm. how you can earn money. That's fine. But at the end of the day there there has to be their objectives are probably wrong then. You know, if, uh, and, that, and that comes for the top. You know, set their objectives. Set their objectives differently. Set their objectives. That your objective is to get another 5,000 season tickets in there next year. Mm. You know, regardless of the profit the club's making. Things like that. You need, you need, they, need, they need to think outside the box. They need to set different objectives so that people have got different tasks and they'll look at things for a different manner. Whereas at the minute, it's all just short term thinking, get as much money in as we can because we need to pay this guy 30 grand a week wages, that's not how it operates, you need to look at the big picture, right. get people th throughout Scotland, it's a big part of their life, and people are jacking it left, right and centre, you know, I know I know for a fact, my mates in Lockheed, uh, they, they, they've they still got a supporters bus, but I know loads of them haven't got season tickets any longer, you know, came to certain ages, married, mm. kids, you know, and they've just got different priorities, if it was more enticing, they maybe still have them. 
I know, I know for a fact I'm on the verge. I'm definitely on the verge. And uh, they just piss me off that much nowadays. It's just, they, they don't give much back. You know, is it is it is it is the team on the park? I'm I'm more than happy, and I, I love Rory Dyer, and I love the way the team's going. So I'm more than happy. I'll be going this season with my kids. But just things that when that renewal thing comes out, and just how I don't know, it just really annoys me. And I know for a fact the powers that beat Celtic are praying that Sevco win the his playoffs. You know, I mm-hmm. don't care what anyone says. They must be praying. Oh, sure. You know. Aye, they do, you know, because that's their short-term thinking. Because they're just thinking, "Whoa, if they get in here, look at the ticket sales we'll get." You right. know, and everybody will flock back and we'll sixty thousand again. No, we won't. Because people, the people, the diehards that gave up, they'll not be back. You know, you maybe get some five nights that will come back again, but you've got a lot of diehards that have had enough, and they won't be back. Well, I, I, so I with the offensive that, behavior I, at football and things I, as well. I, I think, but, it's, this is the thing as well. I think there's so many things going on. You know, I know we mentioned the spitting proper nonsense today, the, the, the behaviours, maybe that kind of thing, where it's just pushing and pushing and pushing at the fucking diehards all the time. And anybody with half a fucking brain is looking at this going, how much mayor can I take here? Like, how much do you expect me to take? Because you see that the last time it will happen again, if the Tepco do get up and they, they, they stroke one pen about promoting that game, there's going to be fucking war. It's like, we're not I, I, I tell you something as well. There's a there's a total misconception of Sevco coming to the league that it's going to it's not going to change the league whatsoever. Aberdeen are still going to be our main challengers, followed right. by Dungeon United. It'll be a, it'll be a wee thing to start off with. Sky will be able to promote it. Oh, Rangers are back, even although we know they're back. No back, they're only there for the first yeah. time. But they're not going to be a challenge. They're going to be lucky. They're going to be lucky to finish the top half of the league. I mean, they're they're a poor poor fucking team. So it's not as if and that's another thing, and I'm coming back to this again, this thing about, uh, that's what it was four years ago when Rangers were in the league, the, 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 the tickets were games. But it's not the same fucking team, it's not the same product, right. it's not the same competition. Forget about that, right? And this idea that they, they, they come up and suddenly that Scottish football fucking same. You, it's, it's, it's not going to be because they're not, I mean, it, they're going to be getting beat week in, week out as far as I can see. I, I the think team to got. me, like, they players for any team coming up to be bottom six the fact that it's fucking named they'll probably be top six going on the basis of honest mistakes and all the fish that they'll get gone from but as you say they're fucking miles behind I mean Hearts would fucking take them in the cleaners next season definitely you know Aberdeen say like fucking Inverness you know because and all, all people will understand as you say is it's no, it's no Rangers it's no Rangers are playing it's just this new team and there's nothing to be worried about you know but what I mean you know I just hope it all gets done fucking uh, makes irrelevant and they get fucked on Wednesday and say that and that's it, you know? Right. End the circus. Right, so we're, uh, we're an hour and 40 minutes in, so Paul, I think we, 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 we've kind of covered everything there and heard a wee rants and that and we're kind of maybe going over a bit over all ground and that, but Paul, as we mentioned at the start of the show, everybody who listens to this would know probably anyway, but you, uh, you, you fulfilled a dream, I suppose, on Friday night. Um, we performing at Celtic Park. I have to say, I done it first league, but there you go. I performed in the Hall. <laughs> no, I just wanted to get that in there. But uh, no, Paul, tell us uh, everything about Friday night, start to finish. What went on? How it went? How you felt? I mean, I, I read some of your posts on, on Facebook. Like, no, it was one of the greatest days of your life or nights of your mm-hmm. life. So, I mean, fill, fill us in, man. I, we've been pretty excited to hear about it since. Uh, since it was mentioned, and uh, well, I think everybody would be dying to hear what happened on Friday night. Aye, I mean, obviously, I'd, you know, I'd went a wee bit fucking pear-shaped with the fact that the St Johnston game was on, and it was so late in the day, and everything had been so piped for that, there was just nothing we could do about it, but thankfully it didn't become an, an issue whatsoever. It just it really didn't. So, Did they maybe not add to it in a certain wee way? It, it that, certainly uh, helped tonight, I'll no. tell you that. It helped tonight, on the night, like, it, it just framed everything perfectly, like, but... You know, I was worried, oh, fuck, that's it. People just got to say, no, no, no. But there was a few pull-outs and stuff. People replaced them, but nothing spectacular. Uh, so I was there. I, I was there uh, in Celtic Park for half past four on Friday, along with Richard Swan and John O'Farrell for Celtic Canvasar and Claire and Chris, who were singing. And um, to basically set things up. And what we had done was, or certainly what John O'Farrell had done was, the infamous graphs of the book, Harper and Mind Maps, stuff mm-hmm. like that, 
we'd blown all them up to put them all right round the carry deal suite. All right. To, to make the whole fucking thing of me. And we obviously we had the uh, we asked the Sears Premier banner up, we had the Kino Foundation banner up to, to support them and promote them and stuff like that. So we had the, the place looking fantastic and we had all the we had thirty four tables, so we had and every one of them was named after a player who lost out because of Rangers cheating uh, and, and things like that. So we had all that decked decked out, it was great. And then we, we really, I mean, Celtic could not have been any more supportive in terms of the staff that was there. Um, it was just a case of, on you go, you know, just do what you need to do. So that was really good. It was just completely in the asshole. So we were able to set up really, really quickly because, you know, unlike pubs or halls or whatever, the Kennedy Suite is a venue that's there to entertain folk. You know, that's what they do. That's what they're there for. So the screens were fine. You know, the, we had two big screens with the film on and had uh, six plasmas around the actual home of auditorium with the film on as well and the game, of course. We all had that hooked up really quickly. Microphones obviously were spot on. Sound was spot on. The house sound reverberated around the whole place. So all the kind of things that can normally create wrinkles in an evening were all sorted out. So then it was just a case of setting the place up, setting the raffle up because it was envelopes and all that kind of thing. And, you know, we're running about daft and getting changed and stuff like that. And before we knew it, it was kind of like, oh, I suppose people looked down the stairs and, and up they came. And so, you know, there's a lot of uh, good friends here that I've been seen for a long time and whatever, and everybody came. It was fantastic. And then, of course, the kind of game took over and sort of watched that. And, you know, it was great because I had Javis there who obviously directed and edited the film and he was fucking blown away. Um it was quite funny because Richard Swan was the MC and he'd done a fantastic job. But I think he'd admit himself at the start, he was quite nervous, you know, just with the size of the crowd and all that kind of thing. And was kind of saying, no, 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 you're good at this. Fucking hell, man. And uh, he, he, he put a wee nudge into yeah that he was, you know, he came up for Liverpool to hear what your never walk alone should sound like and stuff like that. So that was really good. Um, and obviously the game, then the buffet at half time, which was fucking phenomenal. I mean, um, you know, we are buffet, you know, it can go either way. Like, it can sometimes be like the standard sausages and sausage rolls and sandwiches, eh? But I mean, fucking, I had everything. People were right in it, and there was actually stuff left, believe it or not. Uh, and then, of course, the game. And then, so the, the plan was that we thought, right, as soon as the game finishes, let's boom, get in it. So, found full time going, boom, Richard's up to get everybody in their seats, and that was it. Lights went doing fantastic, and Richard started an intro. Now, I didn't know anything about the intro whatsoever. You know, I knew he was doing one, but I didn't know what it would be. And what he did was just absolutely phenomenal. Is he built it up? He started talking about the, the, the you know the venues that been shown in, and you know the, the countries, continents, money raised, things like that, and saying it's not about this, it's not about that, and all this kind of thing. And, and he built up, and he had um, as the end, as he started to build up after about five ten minutes, he had Cashmere by uh, Led Zeppelin kick in. And the whole place was kind of reverberating to that, and he was building up, building up. And then he introduced myself and Ja on, on the stage. And what he had said to us, we were sitting quite far away from the stage, and he said, I want you to walk slowly when you walk up. Then he just sort of bound up. So I'm, 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 not joking, I'm not exaggerating when I say that the walk from the seat to the stage was the most greatest moment in my life. It was incredible. People cheering and the non-music and the adrenaline. And it wasn't a... It wasn't like a fucking beauty. It wasn't an orgasmic thing. It wasn't anything like that. It was just sheer bliss. It was just unbelievable feeling I'd never felt in my life before. And we came up, and so, as you both know, that would be the time normally where I would then go up and introduce the film and say, this is what you're going to see, blah, blah, blah. But I knew we were kind of up against it with time, so what I'd say to Richard was, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something else. So basically just went up and said, right, everybody on their feet, into the huddle, one, eh, three, two, one, Everybody singing We Still Won and they all done it after singing, you know, we're doing the huddle and all this kind of thing. So that was phenomenal watching everybody going mental. And by this point, Ja, he's he's on the stage watching this going, This is fucking unbelievable. Because you know, you know what Celtic fans are like, we started in the huddle, everybody was going mental, you know. Fucking whole Kennedy was going up going crazy. So that was fantastic. And videoed it and stuff like that. It's like fuck me, see, this is unbelievable. So done that, boom, film came on. Great respect shown to the film. There was plenty of shouting, cheering, that kind of thing. Because obviously there's a few drinks that have been consumed. Uh, and I was, I was at my table, uh, big co 
corner uh, was at the table was remarkably sober Harper oh, no as well, which I have to say his wife was there or sorry his partner was there um, so that might have been the reason and my right. mum was there and and my son James was there and it was brilliant because after the event uh, Lisa Miller who was doing the raffle had said to me she said you should have seen the look on your mother and son's face when you went up she said they were just so happy and that really got to me like you know because obviously they have suffered sort of throughout this for being threatened and all and abuse and all that kind of thing so to, to know that they were happy and proud and all that kind of thing proud really woman, eh? just 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 hit just you know blew me away like you know and i was so happy with that and so Paul got a phenomenal reception standing ovation and all that kind of thing we up done a q a which was an absolute riot it was it was hilarious and uh ja asked a few answered a few questions as well and i think ja sort of because he had this spoke before it shocked a few people when he heard this broad Liverpool accent you know and they're like fucking hell um, cause, and he had already had a kindred of spirit because he met Linda Croker for uh, Sean's Trust um, and she's a scouser as well so they, they were like kindred spirits oh my god no, that's kind of like, so that was absolutely brilliant and then done a wee message at the end and stuff like that thank you everybody stuff like that and so and that was it and then after that it was just a case of people coming up and talking that and it was just what I appreciated more than anything about people that night was they came for a party do you know what I mean? They didn't come here, didn't come and go, right, entertain me, you know? Or, you know, I'm here to be fucking entertained, you get on with it. It was the key, but and that, that just really made the night. So, everything was going on fine, and, and it was just fantastic. I was like, this is unbelievable. And it was one of the nights where it just flew by, you know? One minute I was sitting there at 7 o'clock, next minute it was like 5 to 12. And then, of course, there's always one thing. So, Richard Swan comes up to me and he says, eh, uh, just to give you a wee heads up, he said, there's been a wee bit of a problem with a guy outside. I said, well, what's the problem? He said, he's punched one of the, the pictures, like, you know, one of the Celtic pictures that was outside uh, in the hallway. Like, I was like, for fuck's sake, what the fuck? So, he said, just in case Celtic can he said, any bother. So then, about five minutes later, the guy, Stephen, who was phenomenal for Celtic, was like, ah, listen, I've got an issue with this guy, we're going to have to get the pole. I said, well, who the fuck is it? He said, I don't know. So I went up and I didn't recognise the boy at all. So, he was being incredibly aggressive towards the stewards, and they were kind of like, what the fuck? And I went up and I said, look, what's the problem, mate? And he's like, who the fuck are you? And I said, well, it's my night, so what's the issue? I'll try and help you. And he's like, I'll tell you what the issue is. I said, what? He goes, see that guy there? And he points at the steward. I said, aye. He goes, he knows fuck all about Robert the Bruce. And I was like, <laughs> what? And he's like, I'm Scottish. My ma's Scottish, my dad's Scottish. I went, right, that's cool, mate, no bother. I says, why don't we just sit down and talk about it? And he, I said, why have you been punching the glasses? I never punched the glasses. His fucking hand was covered in blood. So then he, I said, well, why? And the guy said, you're throwing pint, thumb, pint glasses as well. I don't wear fucking glasses. I'm like, oh, for fuck. So he just couldn't get any reason out of him at all. So I had to just hoy him out, and that was it. But it didn't spoil the night whatsoever. And um, there were so many great, great people there, you know, and the likes of Richard and that, I mean, they were absolutely phenomenal, and John and all that, I mean, they couldn't have done any And then, of course, we had the lassie, Claire, going, who sang at the premier, Jason, if you remember, the, the first song. Oh, she was brilliant. Uh, and, and she was a bit nervous as well, because obviously, you know, there's 340 people there, and, you know. It's a big room, eh? Uh, you, know, you know, something that I've grown accustomed to, speaking from the crowds but for people I don't know I fucking hate me uh, but she was brilliant um, she'd done a lot of Celtic stuff and she um, you know sang a song for the film and whatever and um, finished off with Cheerio to 10 in a row which literally almost took the roof off the place like you know um, so that was it and then I was talking to Naz Mohammed, who's a great guy and he gave us a mean jail off back along to the city and I was really conscious of that, that I was like, right, you know, the, the guy with the hassle was named Bob, but the last thing I need right now, because this has been pitch perfect, is anybody to come up and go, well, here's what I would have done with the film, or this was this, or this was that. But nobody was like that, it was just phenomenal. And uh, let's see, we had a raffle, we, we raised uh, 450 quid for the Kino, 450 quid for the British Heart Foundation. I probably overshot that, that's probably one regret, because I put up two season tickets for the raffle thinking you know that that, that kind of prize would ensure that everybody in there would, would go for it but some people thought that was a ridiculous prize to have two season tickets and well, I've already got a season ticket and um, <coughs> some people were completely unaware of the Kano and the British Art Foundation which was just like eh you know but you can only do so much but we've done we've done something anyway and um, so that was good and it was just it was one of the ones where 
you know, when you have one of the nights to come back and then I woke up at seven in the morning in the hotel, my man James was here and I could have, I was on the 17th floor of the Premier Inn uh, in, in uh, West Nell Street and I could have flown down to this, you know, I was just so high with the, with the emotion at all because it was a big thing for me, like, you know, I mean, this is Selly Park, you know what I mean? It's and, and it's full and it's my film and all that kind of thing and the love and the support was incredible. And... Um, from the little acorns, you know, just the start of this project, but, but you know, the, the the book launch way back in the Admiral and things like that, to, to get to somewhere like that, it was just like, holy shit, you know, and I made a promise to myself that um, I wanted to savour it, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that's always looking back or looking forward, I'm never in the moment, <coughs> and I really did savour it, and I just wanted to thank everybody who came and everybody who supported it, because, you know, you made an old man very happy. Brilliant! And I tell, I tell me, see the Premier, Paul. How many was at the Premier? Two hundred. Two, aye, right. Because see, I, I didn't really appreciate the magnitude. I seen some of the photos, the amount of people who were at the Kerrydale Suite. Bloody right. hell, it was amazing. And you know, I, I know all the folk that were there, and they all, especially the boys for the Kano and stuff like that. They, uh, they, they, everyone in contact with us the next day and says it was unbelievable. Right. You know, they were, they were blown away by it. They just says it was absolutely fantastic. And uh, I, I just think, uh, just absolute kudos to you, mate. You know, I've been at loads of your films uh, throughout the thing, and they've, mm-hmm. every one of them has been totally different. And uh, well, the film has been the same, but every right. one of the, the events have been different. And uh, <coughs> I just think you deserve. Um, a massive amount of credit and I just think you should be very, very proud of yourself because see at the end of the day you've done all this on your own. I know people have helped you along the way but you've you've done it yourself, you know, and it's just, I just think it's massive kudos to you and it's the, it's it's an amazing thing that you've achieved and I think it's just the start of like a long road that you'll be on at the minute, you know. Yeah, I, as I've said to on you, go mate. No, I just got to say that one of the things has been that the support for the next project is, is becoming enormous. I mean, you know, here's an example, right? He, he, he try you know, thing, take things granted for, for granted. So the next book that I'm doing, which I've almost finished, the foreword's being done by John Fallon, right? And that foreword came in the day, and he, John was very, um, how can I, uh, he was very complimentary to me. He was very outspoken on the subject matter and Celtic in general. And I was like, oh, brilliant. You know, thanks very much, John. Right, boom, get that in the bother. And I'd say to Ja, I said, oh, by the way, I said, look, we've got the forward here. And he was like, John Fallon? I said, aye, he's used to play for Celtic and Goals. I said, he was on the bench in Lisbon. And he was just like, he couldn't believe it. And then it hit me. I was like, you're right. It's like, this guy was on the bench in Lisbon. Oh. And he's doing a forward for a fucking bookie mine, like, you know. And, uh, and he'll be in the film as well, John, because he's fantastic. And it's like, the support of that has been incredible and it's just been sort of, people are itching to get in about that kind of thing, you know, and, and, and it makes us be determined that, you know, Ja, I'll tell you, we spent most of that game, the main reason I didn't see much of the game is we spent most of the game talking about the film, talking about budgets, talking about where we're going to shoot, what we're going to shoot, how we're going to shoot it, we tricks we can do, all that kind of thing. And Ja is buzzing because although he's done plenty of films before, he's never experienced what he's experienced at the Premier or at Celtic Park, where hundreds of people have come and watched the film that he directed, you know what I mean? So, um, and you know, and he's currently involved in a, a film of the, the Casa, you know, with the Union Place in, in Liverpool, that kind of came out with the old sack Liverpool Dockers and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they're kind of ambling along to try and get money and this, that, and next thing. And he's just like, he's like, listen, we're not going to have any of these problems with this next one because look at this support here, like, you know, and people are doing it. And it is, and it was... It was, it was incredible, you know, I can't over egg just how much it meant to me, you know, to, to, to show something at Celtic Park, and as I say, even with that wee bit of trouble, and going into a meeting on Monday with the guys and thinking, fuck, here we go, how much is this going to cost me, they were just like, oh, brilliant night, brilliant night, fucking took seven grand behind the bar, one guy was misbehaved, the rest of them were fine, Pff, welcome back anytime, and I was like, fucking dancer, like, you know. Paul, Paul, I've got a couple of questions for you, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the way you're wording this. It doesn't sound. Um, the, the 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 fact that you showed at Celtic Park give the film um, a wee bit more legitimacy, and I don't mean in your eyes or, or our yeah. eyes, maybe to other people looking in. I mean, it's all right. Fucking, you make a film and you you take it around supporters clubs and stuff like yeah. that. But 
for it to actually be on to be on a Celtic Park, I'm sure that opened a few people's eyes. Like it did, and it also um, I've got to say as well, see the staff at Celtic, every single one of them was like that. When can I get a DVD? Of this, right. you know, and I was like, this is when I've never done anything in my life that has opened as many doors for me as this film. Nothing even close. You know, you suddenly get this recognition that you just have never experienced before. And it does, people, I mean, I walked into the ticket office yesterday to get an extra ticket for Sunday. And I said to the guy, boom, boom, and he was like, oh, how's the book going? I've not seen this boy before my life. I was like, right. He goes, how'd your night go on Friday? He said, I heard the film was doing great. And the two other lads in the ticket office are looking going, who the fuck's that? Fucking film. And they're looking at me and say, I don't want to recognise him. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, that's that kind of thing happens all the time now, you mm. know? And um, it, do, it makes you determined to just keep going and, and day mayor and stuff like that. But also, you're right about the legitimacy of Harper. It does in a lot of people's eyes. It sort of makes them raise an eyebrow and go, fucking hell. Was there anybody for the club there? I don't even mean obviously uh, stewards and staff that worked there. But no, I mean, there was going to be, but the game being on the, the same night just negated that oh, completely, so. like, you know, which was, you know, it was a bit of a pisser, but I'm not going to cry over spilt milk, you know. No, and I think, I think as well the amount of money that you've raised uh, for charity and all this, especially the, the Bold Cano Foundation, I just think it's been absolutely phenomenal, mate. So, is, is that all your shows in Scotland? Yeah. One, and one more left in Las Vegas? Two, two more left. I've got one more in Vegas and one which is a bit of a secret which will be revealed at the end of June, which will reveal. But Vegas is the next one at 10th of June. And yeah. um, I, I, on, on the Cano Foundation thing, I have to say that. One of the things that's opened my eyes over the whole tour is just how big Celtic are. And we always talk about how big Celtic are, but I've seen it. You know, it's, it's, it's in Perth, Western Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, Northern California, wherever you go, there's Tim's there, that kind of thing. And the reason that there are Tim's there is because each and every one of them from somewhere else were given the gift to Celtic. And that's why I love the Kino Foundation, because the Kino Foundation is given the gift to Celtic to younger people. And now, all the shit that we've just talked about, you know, sell like this, prices, fucking tickets, make it harder for younger people. The Kino Foundation make it easier, so that's why I'm, yeah. that's why I'll always be supporting them, and they have supported me as well. You know, there was a table with them there on Saturday, eh, sorry, on Friday, they're all coming up, shaking hands and that thing, and, and as you know, Jason, Jace, uh, Joe and Brian, all these guys, Steph, they're all fantastic people. Yeah, you know what I mean? Not, they're not Celtic daft. Exactly, which just makes it all the better. And, and it's, and the, and the thing is with the Cano Foundation, it's a total simple concept. Take kids Aye. to see Celtic, and that's it. Do you know, there isn't Aye. any fancy Dan organising, there isn't any. There is a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, it's rough and ready. It takes kids to Celtic games, and the Celtic fans fund it. You know, Aye. that's it. And, and that's it, and it's always a great feeling sending money to the bank account, sending money to PayPal, yep. sending them a cheque, and that kind of thing, because you know you've got to see it in front of your eyes that next season. The kids yeah. will be there, and it's phenomenal. So it was fantastic. We had their banner up, you know, um, proudly, um, and, and they have been as they've been an absolutely integral part of it. As have you know, let's just say it was, and hopefully, the film has helped in some small way, push them up a wee bit in the sense to let people know <laughs> who they are. You know, yeah. And I, I think one of the points that I, I, I made the point at your premiere. I had I, I felt I had to get that point across. Mm. But there's plenty of folk out there that masquerade the Celtic supporters. But all they do is write about Sevco and all they do is write right. about nonsense. You're a Celtic diehard and everything that you do is get Celtic at the core of it. Mm. And there isn't any agendas with you. You're not looking for anything. Uh, I mean, you're, looking, you're obviously looking to further your career and things like that. This is, this is part of you. And yeah. you make, no, make no apologies for any of that. But Everything that you do is because of Celtic. Mm -hmm. You know, Celtic's your driving, your driving force, and everything that you do. Well, you know, is, and also, I think for me personally, that everything I do is always with the backdrop of Celtic fans in my ear. You know, I know how Celtic fans will react to something, and I sort of yeah. work accordingly. And you're right. I mean, we all know you <coughs> have these people that fucking they're, they're into Celtic for a career, and they masquerade the Celtic fans with what they want to push their in agenda owner and that kind of thing and I've never done that I've never you know I never intended to, to try and make money with this film or that people know it was a token fee I took at the various events you've done and stuff like that it was all about getting the message out there and in the next film we'll have virtually nothing about Rangers 
or Safeco in it at all. It won't be about Celtic and what we've put up with and what we put up with in Scotland and stuff like that, and through a, a certain association within Scotland. But it is to me, I do things, try and do things that are important to you know this. The next book I'm doing, anyone but Celtic, is probably the third part of a trilogy, which started with by any means necessary, which took on the media and tried to promote the things like this. Then, of course, the Ashes years and that that was it. And um, what's great about it, Jason, is that, and, and you, you've experienced this a million times yourself, is because of all these events, you meet people who you know are exactly the same as you, um, you know, and you also then realise who really are they. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they're the ones that get found out quite quickly, you know. All right. See, and see, uh, like, the, the, before we go any further, a couple of things, and there's something, I, I'm a bit gutted I didn't mention this a few weeks ago, by the way. I got a message, I, I don't know if you remember a while back, there was a guy contacted us on Twitter, a guy, Brian Burton, and he contacted us, uh, and he, it was, we were talking about the Kano Foundation, about raising money, and he had a signed photo for Tony Watt the night of the Barcelona game, and he says, I'll donate that to the Kano Foundation. He sent us a message a couple of weeks ago, and the, Joe got a thousand quid for it, you know, and the Kano Foundation mm-hmm. got that, and that guy just donated that. So, Brian, if you're listening, mate, uh, much appreciated for having the Kano Foundation and well done. You know, I was gutted. I forgot to actually mention it. I made a point. Another thing is the people have been asking to make a mention the, the skydive. So it's the 6th of July. Uh, we're doing a skydive for the Kano Foundation. I only give a page in order uh, and get it up there. But uh, there's, I think, 20 to 30s are doing a skydive up at, uh, in Fife for the Kano Foundation on the 6th of July so we are uh, risking life and limb so <laughs> please give generously and uh, I'm sure you as well so anybody that's doing it all the money is going to the same pot anyway so anybody that's uh, raising money if you see any things on Facebook or Twitter or that, give a couple of quid and because I say it's just <laughs> all idiots like myself that's going up there and risking life and limb to, uh, <laughs> to get kids to Celtic games and uh, I <laughs> well I know that uh, Richard Swan's doing it and I spoke to him briefly about it on Friday and he is absolutely shitting himself <laughs> he doesn't even make any bones about that whatsoever oh, and, uh, oh I'm saying is Jason if you get the chance but, to do a tandem with a female do that Ah, <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> so. Right. Um, well, actually, there was one wee thing. I was, was Richard not going about sticking his iPhone under noses or that, or was he too busy? No, no, no. He was far too busy for that. Uh, I wasn't sure. And that, uh, the rest of his crew were all too busy trying to tire. So. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> did they so, Did they get? Did them? Did them? They follow it? No. Eh, uh, I'm not really sure to be honest. It was one of the. I don't know. Like you know. The Carlook team, they're always there. Uh, <laughs> they're not well, here to into a few things. And they, 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 I listened to their podcast. They went up to Harrington and into, and a few guys up in the supporters club in Harrington. It was really good. That was their first day on the road. So we shout out to the TikTok you know, podcast. I listened to that the other day. Very good. Happy days. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're well over two hours now. Um, if there's anything else, Paul, I don't know if you want, want to add anything else. Frank. Frank McGarvey, I need to give a mention to Frank McGarvey as well. He raised the uh, four thousand. He auctioned his uh, he auctioned his nineteen eighty five uh, Scottish Cup winners jersey. Oh, right. That was the last thing he ever. Uh, I don't know if his header was the actual last touch of the ball. I think it was. Player. I think it was. He, right. I think he told he was surplus to requirements there that weekend. So it was on the Aye, he was on the radio at the weekend. I know Frank, she's went through a bit of a tough time mm-hmm. uh, of late and whatever, but uh, fair play to Frank and uh, well done. And all his money went to food banks in Glasgow, so he raised about four grand. So absolutely brilliant, Frank do, McGarvey. Do, Much do. respect for everybody here. Do you, know, do you know, Paul, right? I find myself thinking about things tonight. <laughs> I think, fucking hell, Paul, I could just make a film about that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, for example, th- Next year will be the thirtieth anniversary of Love Street, and obviously you done the done the book Aye. online. Paul should Paul should be doing a documentary about that, like no. I just there he comes up there and thinking about well, Paul and Josh should just go and make a film. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 funny, easy, it's funny you say that because um, see the amount of people that I've interviewed for books, like primarily football players, right, or whatever I spoke to, and then I've done books and I've got stories with them, and then stayed in touch or became friends or whatever. They'll say. You were talking with someone too. Did I ever tell you this story? And mm. they tell you something. You for fuck's sake, that would have been brilliant for the book, but they right. never tell you at the time. Right. 
Yeah. You know, I could, the, the, the book I'd done a particular book, Love Street, I could do double the size of a book with that, with the stories for that kind of thing now, you know? Yeah. Um, and you so know, fancy doing a wee film. I, 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 I want to take Harper to task, you know, that's a great idea, Paul. <laughs> I mean, it's, cer- aye, I mean, it's, certainly, uh, aye, it's certainly worth something we could look at because the next the next film will be a lot easier to do than the asterisk years. I'll tell you that right now. Um, so it'll take a lot less time. So um, it's certainly something that I would love to do. I mean, it's obviously you've got to try and get the appetite and stuff, but I think enough of the guys who were involved in that. I mean, the only problem I would say was be the fact that Love Street's not there anywhere. Um, you know, I'd love to have been able to go, because, I mean, I'll tell you right now, through a bit, through a bit of guerrilla filming, we managed to film a bit of Inside Fur, Fur Park last week. Right. <laughs> that was just... We had to get a bit of Fur Park. They had nothing to do with what we were actually talking about at the time. Um, and then they just left a gate open, so we just walked to the pitch and filmed. <laughs> I think I think Love Street. I think maybe trying a Hoddy Mo Johnson could prove a bit difficult for the Love Street. Uh, aye, I know. But, <laughs> but you know what? Let us know. Let us know. See, 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 <laughs> aye, 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 aye. See on that actually. I was somebody asked me an interview last week. What book would you love to do? Like if you could do anything. And I sat and thought about it. And some people will go, "What? What the fuck would you want to do that?" And at first I was thinking, I would love to do that book about Mo Johnson. The book, what actually he thought on us, and I thought, "Nah, fuck that." Well, the book I would love to do would be actually about Charlie Nicholas. Because I just think the stories that that guy could tell would be unbelievable. And the talent that he had. And where did it all go wrong? And what's he like now? And all this kind of thing. Because he's never ever really done a proper book. And I, you then led me to start watching these videos and these old goals. And you think, Jesus, fuck, this guy was a genius. Oh. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's, he's calm. He's got a cracking career for himself, you know. That's oh, aye. He's not doing a bit of disease. He's obviously aye. well up in the three. But I, I mean, he was, for my age group, especially for our age group, you're mm. talking, you're a wee bit younger than me, but for my age group, the, the Love Street game is the best game I'll ever go to. I'll oh. never ever get to another game that comes anywhere close to it. Just a lot of the stars aligned and it was like the perfect age, you know, when Celtic meant everything to you. And it, uh, I, it's just, it was unbelievable, obviously, the way we've done it. And Charlie Nicholas was everybody's ultimate hero when we were kids. You know, Aye. he was a guy, he was a guy, I, I wouldn't get my ear pierced because of you know, stuff like that. <laughs> no, brown side shed, the wedge haircut. Saw, I don't know if you saw him in that thing, the Football Mavericks show last week, and I was showing so many stuff, and he was talking about Arsenal. This is when he started to really think about and he's basically saying he had to carry Arsenal for four years. Everybody was looking for him to be the guy. He was only like 19, 20 year old. Right. Um, but he showed that goal which he won play of the year for, which was uh, playing the goal of the season for the, the one against Switzerland for Scotland. Right. Where he pulled it down one foot and volleyed it with the other. I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ. If a Scottish player done that now, we'd be talking about it for years. Oh, I know. Oh, what, what a talent he had. What a talent. You know, <laughs> Celtic, we, we were, you know, it was the, the amount of riches we had up front, as you know, guys like him and Brian McLean. Bloody hell. You just think how good these players were, and even La Petite Merde, you know, you could put them well, all there as well. Be, you got 750 grand for Charlie Nicholas and replaced it with 75 grand Brian McLear, who then went home to come to score it four years in a row. Aye, so, something to do with the word day, you know what I mean? Aye, I know, I know. So, <laughs> aye, but the Love Street film, that sounds absolutely aye, amazing. And then a couple of years <laughs> after that, a couple of years after that, you've got the 30th, 30th anniversary of the of years, so you've got to be busy. In <laughs> fact, anybody's got any ideas, hashtag Paul make us a film on Twitter. Aye. I better not, you'll drive him daft, innit? <laughs> I know. And, 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 let me just say something real. If I get fucking asked this we're one more time, but the fucking asterisk years will be available for everybody on October 1st. So that's it, right? I mean, how many times have we been asked that over the last few I've, I've been asked probably about 400 times myself. <laughs> 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 every single I, I, place I go. I get asked about that and I'm working everything for people and that. So, uh, I know that's... So, well, the one thing I'll say, although say is, it doesn't bother me that much because if the demand is... Because there's a website being built now, as I said, that's going to everything. You, the only way you'll be able to get is to donate to the Kino. If the demand is such that I've witnessed the Kino are going to make a fucking fortune of this because yeah. there's so many people that are desperate to get it. I mean, I mean, I know for a fact I'm going to, I'm going to sit one night with a few gin and tonics which will shock you and I'll be like, fuck, I'm going to just go and fucking stream that. Do you know what I mean? I'm asking like thousands upon thousands of people are going to watch that. Thousands. I, I, I hope so. I hope so. And as I say... <laughs> Can he, the Kino can just keep paying it forward with that. But I've got a message just coming here, Jason, for you to see this from a, at J Murphy 
underscore 2737 it says Paul tell Jason 10 men won the league for me I'm assuming that's his best game I was assuming, I'm assuming he's what the phone made <laughs> Aye, I'm, a bit, Aye. I'm a bit young for that, as I say, as people of mine and Paul's vintage. Uh, I'm, off, I'm off it, sorry, you know, my dad went to look. I go to the, the old firm games back then. <laughs> I won't, won't but, yeah, I mean, who, who, who can grumble with that, you know, 4 2 against the Rotten Mob? But, uh, yeah. see, see one thing about Love Street, right? I don't think I've ever told you this before, maybe, maybe I did, but I was, what, we'd have been 12, Paul. Mm-hmm. I hadn't even been at my first Celtic game at 12 year old, you know, I didn't go till I was 14, but. I can remember this, and without a word of a lie, right, I was listening to the radio. Um, the usual, you didn't get to the, the last five minutes of the first Aye. half, the second half, right, no? And uh, I, I swear to God, this is the truth, right? I remember lying in, in, on my, in my bedroom, the wee single bed. I was lying in the bedroom, the radio on, and I'd done this for the entire for the entire game. If it stops, I thought, if I stop, it's going to fuck everything up, right? Mm. And I was just going like that. <laughs> I've done it the entire game, I can remember it, like it was yesterday, I sat right. and done that the entire, and all it stopped at half time, and uh, so I, I think I take a, a bit of credit for us winning the league. Well, see, see how you're talking about daft things now, I can embarrass a couple of my mates here, I'm, I'm sure they won't mind, you could make yours as well, Harper, Jock, Jock and his twin Steph, see when they were younger, <laughs> when they were younger, see when it was the 12th of July every year, the two of them used to dress up in Celtic strips, sit in their room with wolf tone music on with the door locked, and refused <laughs> to leave the house, and their mum would give them their dinners in the room. <laughs> 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 when they were really used to dress up in Celtic strips on wolf tone music, and refused that, that, to leave the room. <laughs> that just reminds me, Jason, in, in Wishaw a couple of weeks ago, so I, I can't remember who was it told me this. Said um, I may have been that guy. It was so worker actually. He said he was talking about somebody, and he said he was only, this guy was the only guy ever to throw a snowball on Orange Walk. And I said, how do you mean? He says he kept it in the fridge for six fucking months. <laughs> Told the July twelfth, he threw it. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I know, there's some rockets about here. I'll tell you, but he's holding them all shortly. <laughs> <laughs> And I've just had a wee text in, uh, says, I have a story for Big Larkin about a ref, but I'll tell you later who sent it. <laughs> jo, jo, uh, yeah. See mentioning Jock, Jason, can we talk about anything there, or is that still under wraps? Or? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, you know what I mean. No, it's under wraps, because I'm not really sure, too sure what you mean. <laughs> no, I remember he, he, he let us know someone on Saturday that we'd been hoping would happen. Ah, right, no, I, I, I would leave that right now. Right, 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 no problem, no problem. So, like, right, right, that's, we need to start wrapping up, like, no? Right, um, yeah. Because I've, you know, I'm going to sit up from there five hours. Uh, right, anyway, good and bad, good and bad. Good and bad. Good and bad. We'll go bad first, we'll end on good high note. So, bad for the week, Jason, come to you. Um, you should have these prepared by now every week. Uh, I don't know, bad for the week, yeah. It's bad. It's bad. But probably like maybe the realisation big Virgil's maybe well ma maybe it's uh, misinformed, but I think big Virgil Van Dyke's gonna go. That's my bad. Okay, Paul. Uh, my bad. But you know what? My bad would be actually watching sports scene Sunday night and watching that arrogant little bastard, Andrew Dallas, fucking the way he was talking to Scott McDonald and the way he treated him. I thought it was absolutely horrendous. Like father, like son. So that was my bad. My bad was fucking some idiot on Facebook arguing with me that, uh, about the promise oh, and Stephen Gerrard and... Uh, to me, Stephen Gerrard couldn't lace fucking Paul McStay's butts, and he was getting at the pure. Well, Paul McStay only played against Motherwell and Sipman and all this fucking nonsense, and it just absolutely. Draw, draw. I was I was out shopping with my wife, and she kept I kept losing her, and she kept coming. What are you doing with that for? So I'm arguing, with an idiot. and I just couldn't. It was absolutely driving me insane all day, because how anybody could come out with that. Just, ah, but the gospel according to Sky Telly, Stephen Gerrard's uh, best player that I've ever loved. Just, it absolutely flummoxes me. I, don't, I just I don't know. That really, that really pisses me off. There you go. That's oh. my good, my good of the week. Is then getting fucked three one in his last farewell game. <laughs> <laughs> as, yeah. the, as the banner says, Liverpool are shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I 
just, I must admit, when I, I, I did watch about 45, 50 minutes of that game, and this continual shite about, you know, Jedi, oh, the glory, this, that, and this thing, I just thought, what the fuck was the guys like schools, gigs, and the Neville's not be sitting there with 10, 15 medals, league medals, oh. and that cunt's not got one. And they're putting them in the same bracket, you know, like, give me a break, man. If, if, if he got the vote, there was better than the leash. Oh, his vote, it's the, it, it, I bet his vote, I think it was like a landslide that he was better than the leash. He wasn't even as good as fucking Subis, never mind the leash. You're right. But, uh, mm-hmm. aye, there you go. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing about the turn in London after the Everton game, going back uh, to a boozer and it was just all blues and they were all waiting and getting the train back to Liverpool and you were getting flights up the road and everybody was just out in the streets and the, their game was on the big screen and seeing the third goal and it was like the scene of life of Brian and Caesar was talking about free Roger and stuff like that <laughs> everybody was just a fawn of the laugh it was hilarious but yeah that was a good deal laugh ok yeah. Paul you're good uh, well the obvious oh, come on that, I mean I can't top that ever so that, 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 there's nothing I'll be able to be better than that so that's my good uh, my good for the week is uh, I have to give a shout out to Sporters Club in Alloa, Tommy Craig CSC. Aye, brilliant. Um, we, we, obviously, they would have been friendly. There's, a, there's, there's three buses going to Alloa, Stirling area. Um, the Tommy Craig CSC, uh, the St Mungo Shamrock CSC, and my old club, the Roy Mill CSC. I'm sure, our club is the oldest, but there you go, there's a wee dig in there. But uh, for, for a small area, it's. it's Mad to have three buses that go in their, in, their, in their busy buses. But the Tommy Craig announced at the weekend there that uh, they would pay for all their members' season tickets for next season, which to me is just an absolutely phenomenal gesture. A big dunk in that, they run the club, they, they deserve all the kudos for running such a great club that they've managed to obviously build up a, a bank balance to pay for that. But it's, it's a great gesture when, when people are struggling, especially in that area, it's, it's a lot of unemployment in that. Probably. And yeah, I just fantastic. think I just think that's absolutely phenomenal. And they were like anybody who's paid anything so far will be reimbursed with the money they've paid. So I mean, to me, that's just absolutely phenomenal. <coughs> that's it. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Right, that does us. Uh, next week uh, will probably be our last regular homeboy show of the season. As yeah. I say, we'll, we'll 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 maybe do a couple of wee homeboys extras or. If anything big happens, obviously we'll jump on and maybe we'll do a phone and show in the close season, whatever. But uh, I think Joe will be back next week, he says. Yeah. But just that, that's, that's kind of it. Anything else you want to add before we go? Uh, well, just hopefully Joe replaces the intrusers used by the end of the season, you know. <laughs> exactly, he's only got a couple of weeks left. Right, he's, he's, he's working now and he's, he's getting all the overtime going. And actually, Joe, I, 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 he'll, he'll listen back to us. I don't know if he's listening live, but I uh, shouted to Joe, he got an extension in his job yesterday for, for well, his yeah. contract. So that, that was good news for him. And at the end of that contract, hopefully, we'll get him moved into the place I work in, which should be even better for him. Uh, that'll probably happen as well. So great news all around there. Happy on you, Joe so, Boy. Best of luck to the close season. Well, hopefully he's on next week, but obviously his wife's due their third baby. So five weeks. Five weeks. Five weeks. So uh, as always, I always like to play it with Jimmy Johnson. Singing. I'm glad you did Harper because I don't. Did you hear that fucking clown Richard Swan? <laughs> did you know what the song was? Aye, uh, you maybe better fill in the, any listeners who who didn't uh, know that. That was played by Mr. C on the TikTok, and Richard didn't have a clue who it was. I gave him an absolute porn for it. He claimed it was the sound quality. He didn't understand. It's kind of, if you fucking Harper comes it every single time he hosts this show. Aye, right, always so. play it. I love it. So Richard, if you're listening, here's Jinky. This one's for you. <laughs> this one's for you, comrade. <laughs> Right, man. Hell, hell. Hell, hell. Hey, hell, hell. Passing time, passing time. Everyone's passing time. Everyone, their whole life. Passing time like me and you Children play their cares away Life is fun, life is gay 
building castles out of sand, living in the wonderland. Lovers know time goes by, days are long, minutes fly. Fleeting glances mean so much. A lover's sigh, a lover's touch. Passing time, everyone's passing time. Everyone their whole life through. Passing time, like me and you. Time to laugh, time to cry, time for us to wonder why. Moments precious when. Memories that linger on. Summer sun, winter snow, autumn leaves, springs aglow. Raining changes in the sky. Passing time like you and I. Passing time, passing time. Time.